in early, aren't you? Yeah. Special request from the young master. Come in early, he says, Betty. You know, in that smarmy way he has. When he wants something, you know. Oh, I. Go on, Tilda. Yeah, I'll live. Mm. Morning, Betty, love. You're like a warm woolly jumper, what are you? If everybody was as dependable as you, this country would be on its feet again in a fortnight. Oh, yeah. Hey, come and have a cup of coffee, and I'll put you in the picture about this morning. What about this morning? Well, I'm not going to be here, am I? You know that saying, don't you? Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Yeah. Well, today is the first day of the rest of my life. Oh. Shouldn't be allowed to have flaming checks, you know. Just swank money. I've got a bank account. I've got a check. I don't flash a greasy wad of reddies when I'm stocking up the freezer. I'd have took reddies smelling like flaming pig muck off that tiler instead of this gum check. Especially when it's not made out to you. I still can't credit it. You sell a bloke a load of shirts and you come back with a check made out to Mike Ball. I didn't. That flaming lard brain Fred G did. Yeah, but it was your idea he should pretend to be Mike Baldwin. Yes, but not to take it as far as let him sign flaming Baldwin's name on a check. Well, you know what Fred's like. Tell him his bus be often enough and he'll start sitting on telephone wires. He must be knocking on for the stupidest business deal ever. It's like going to buy a new car and coming back with an oily rag. Oh, shut up. What I've got to do is find somebody to cash it for me, put it through their account. Do you know anybody with a bank account, Dad? I mean, there can't be many down to Social Security. I am not drawing Social Security, yeah. am I? And that must be some sort of record and all. I mean, fancy being turned down by the DHSS. I mean, I've seen moggies going in there and coming out with a packet of mice. Are you going to work? Right now. Bog off, then. Ta-da. Oh, by the way, don't go buying any job lots of broken cream crackers. They're very hard to put back together again. Ta-da. Do you know, he's never shown any respect for me, that lad. I wonder why. Don't you worry. I'll cash this. Look, it's worthless, that <coughs> check, Jack. <coughs> it's not... It's a waste of paper it's written on. It's like you. A waste of good skin. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Yep. The highlight of our morning. You can say that again. You said that very wistfully, maybe, Sir Riley. Did I? You know you did. Well. Do you wish you'd done things differently and married, Derek? <laughs> Fat chance I had of marrying him. <laughs> Didn't turn up, did he? And neither did you. No. So, you were both being negative, weren't you? Do you mean if perhaps just one of us had really meant it? You never know. I mean, no psychologist, but I do know folk can influence one another. Like one of you getting enthusiastic about something, and before you know where they are, the other one joined in. Two negatives. That's a very good description of me and Derek. Well, when it comes to relationships, anyway. Now, mate. Well, it is. But to answer your question, yes, I do wish I'd married Derek. I wish it with all my heart. But I couldn't. I couldn't. I mean, I was frightened to death, and I don't know what of, really. You'll get another chance. Will I? Yes. Yes, love? You sell fireworks? Sorry. Len, my husband, wouldn't have them in shop. And you don't want him coming to give me a thick ear some midnight, <laughs> do you? Anyway, what do you want with fireworks? You're a bit old oh, for that, aren't you? I just want a couple of rockets, you know. I love setting a rocket off and watching it race into the sky and then explode in a cascade of stars. They're so brave and carefree, aren't they, rockets? Oh, well, see you. That's what I should have been. Brave like a rocket. Not many people are, Mavis. Hey, hey, hey. What? Have you wiped these tables this morning, Hilda? Of course I have. Oh, oh, well, you must have missed this one, mother. I wiped them all. Anyway, you know, what business is it to yours? You're not the gaffer here, are you? Morning, Hildecock. Oh, be like that. Is it right you've got a job as a test pilot at a broom factory? What's biting, Hilda? Oh, she's been as bad-tempered as a wasp all morning. Do you know, I don't know what's up with folk these days, Betty. Mm. I mean, I know it's November, I know Christmas is coming, I know Rod Stewart isn't available, but life's still got a lot to offer. Oh. Couldn't agree with you more, Bet. Life is what you make it. Like planting an evening smile with a morning kiss, like my mum used to say to me dad. See you later. Oh, Betty, oh. you're at the helm. 
Mm -hmm. Planting an evening smile with a morning kiss. Is that his way of saying he's going to be out all day? Search me. He gives me instructions. They don't take me into his confidence. Well, it wouldn't bother me if he never come back at all. Mm. How's Tony this morning? Well, I mean, he was all right at breakfast, you know. Everything in the right place. His arms, his legs, his head. Don't try to be a comedian, eh, Betty? You're not very good at it, love. Oi, I'll tell you one thing. I didn't ask about you. And being catty doesn't suit you either. Hello there. Sorry. Hey? What? We've not got any empty boxes. Empty boxes? Well, you've not come in here to buy some, have you? No, no. I thought you were after empty boxes for your bonfire. No, no, it's the boss I've come and see. Oh, well, there he is. Have a good look at him. What do you think? What can I do for you, Jack? I was just wondering, would you cash this for me? Well, it's made out to Mike Baldwin. Hmm. I, uh, I think he's expecting you to say something, Jack, by way of explanation, you know. You're not going to believe this. I'll tell you bets on it. Look, I did some business with a bloke, sold him some of them shirts I had, you know. And because he saw me coming out of the factory to see how I fear, right, he thought I were my Baldwin. Hey, <laughs> you wouldn't credit it, would you? Uh, personally, Jack, I find that just a teeny bit wild, if you don't mind me saying so. Yeah, but it's true. Alf? We've neither of us seen that chick, have we, did we? No. That is entirely your own business. Absolutely. I know what you're both thinking, but I have not nicked that off Baldwin. I mean, that bloke signed Baldwin's name because that's who we thought he were buying the shirts off. But he weren't. He were buying them off me. But, well, not exactly. He were buying them off Fred, who he really did think were Baldwin. And that is the truth, as God's God, my judge. Yeah, so that's yeah. Look, put it in your bank account and, and see if it's genuine or not. I don't want a penny piece till it's cleared, not a penny. Yeah, close the door as you go out. Do I look that dishonest then, eh? Do I, eh? You know where I'm going to buy me flaming muffins from, don't you? Well, not here. What do you think? Well, knowing him, it could just be true. Yeah, it could. <laughs> oh, well. How much did this thing cost you? Three quid. Three quid just to see this thing go up in smoke? You've got to be balmy. It'll be worth every penny. I'm into fireworks and bonfires. Me too, love. Well, bonfires anyway. I always have, ever since I was a kid. I never wanted to go home until the bonfire had actually gone out. My mum used to have to drag me away by my pigtail. <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. Sat there gazing into the glowing embers, watching the flames dance and die. And all around the cold, silent night. It's a very primitive feeling, you know, going back to rural savages living in the wild. Do you think so? Oh, I. I never thought about it like that. It just makes me feel warm and happy. <laughs> Come on, Teddy. Go and get some fireworks and we'll find a bonfire tonight. There's bound to be one down at Red Wreck. We can get some spuds and roast them and some chestnuts and we'll get some ale. It'll be great. I prefer a sup my ale in a nice, warm, comfortable pub. Not out in the cold, mate. Sophisticated. Hey, what are you calling names? Look, there's only one thing you can do, Fred. That's to see this Tyler and get the check made out to cash. Me? Yes, of course, you. Get, get your favour now, sir. What am I going to say to Tyler? What excuses am I going to make? Well, you, you're telling me you want cash, cos you don't want to pay any income tax. Now, we'll understand that, because they're always on the fiddle, aren't they? It's called back pocket economy. I'll tell you what. What? I wish there was some flaming income tax to fiddle. Look, if this little arrangement that we've got going with Tyler carries on, I will have. And then I'll reach me proper station in life, a plutocrat. Oh, you know, we'll be able to afford two to pass instead of you joining mine. Yeah, give us another bit. I'm hungry. Get off, wait till you're plutocrat. You don't have to send him on. I'll the table. You've got a very vicious streak in you, Vera. Do you know that? Jack, hey? listen. Why don't we just tell the truth? Tell you that we're a couple of lads that we're trying to make a bob at all, that we've got no factory, and ask him to make the check out to, to both of us. Oh, but if, if we do, we'll never do any more business with it. I mean, he'll think we're a couple of peddlers, a couple of tinkers or something. Well, he must be blind not to have thought of that already. I don't fancy it, Jacko. I don't like being Baldwin. I, I don't feel like Baldwin. Well, you definitely don't look like him. You look like three of them. Vera, we can do it out your jokes. Well, it's not my fault, is it? I've only got to look at Ted, I think, come on. No, I, I, I'm, I'm not doing it, Jacko. I, I feel all sort of awkward when I, when I do it. I, I start sweating and my neck goes all red. <laughs> do you mean like a circus? Look, all, all right. Now, we'll both go and see this Tyler. But you still be Baldwin and leave all the talking to me. Oh, I thought you were just commissioner and just tell us of your ices. Look, what we'll tell him is that I'll be the company secretary. And as such, the cheque should be made out to me. Company secretary? You haven't all joined up writing, can you? Is that right? 
You can't do proper writing, you. Of course I'm flipping can. <laughs> ah, you're back, boss. We were beginning to think you were doing a bit of moonlighting and a fishmonger's. Step outside. Sorry, I take it back. I don't want to fight you. Come on, both of you outside. I've got someone to show you. Come on, that's an order. What do you think? Oh, it's lovely. Whose is it? It's mine. Yours? Have you come up on pills? She beautiful? Ten years old and only 90,000 miles on the clock, and I've got her for peanuts. Well, Brazil nuts, actually. Hop in, Bet. I'll take you for a trip round the block. Me? What about Betty? Someone's got to look after the shop. I'll take her after. Come on, get in. Has it got that time? You all right, Stan? All there, Frank. How are you diddling? Oh, can't complain. Yourself? Oh, in the pink. Hey, Mike. Hey, look here. These are marked up at seven quid. Got to get four quid for them. Yeah, well, it seems a fair enough markup, I suppose. I mean, you've got to make a living, haven't you, Frank? Aye, and you've got to live well. Indubitably. Well, what brings you here? I can't handle any more stock just at the moment. Oh, no, it's not that, was it, Mike? Was it, Mike? Oh, no, no. No, it's, well, it was about this, this check. Shouldn't have been made out to M. Baldwin, Mike here. Me. It should have been made out to J. Dutworth, me, being company secretary, like. You're the company secretary? Oh, aye, yeah. I mean, went to night school for it and got me city and guilds in company secretary, and like that. Is that a fact? Yeah. So if you can make it out to J. Dutworth, not M. Baldwin, is that right, Mike? Right, yeah, yeah. Two words inland revenue. Don't like bad language. You don't want to put this through your books, do you? Now, you said that, Frank. What you'd really like is cash, isn't it? Cash? Yeah, yeah, well, we would, wouldn't we? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, definitely. There's just one snag. What's that? I haven't got 400-odd quid on the premises. What, with the state of law and order as it is now, you know? I'll get it for you tomorrow, though. Tomorrow? Yeah, well, I suppose we'll settle for that, yeah. Well, I may as well tear this cheque up. Oh, no, 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 we'll keep that with us. Don't you trust me? Of course, I trust you, Frank. I'm off. Home. Right, I'll see you in the morning, then. Yeah. Hey, do you fancy a night out tonight? I'm all right, you know, it. I don't mind spending the evening on my own. I mean, I've got that dress to shorten, and I've got a very interesting book from the library on the Kalahari Desert, and there's a Debussy concert on Radio Freeze. So. It's me who doesn't fancy staying in on her own tonight. Oh, I see. I don't know. This winter. I go home in the dark, I lock my front door behind me, and I don't see another solitary soul. And when I wake up in the morning, it's still dark, as if I live underground. Well, it is the worst time of the year. I think I'm missing Len more than I ever did. At least he used to be at home for me to shout at. Where would you like to go, then? Oh, I'm easy. Flicks? Rovers? We can give this new boyfriend of Bet Lynch's the once-over do a bit of gooseberrying. <laughs> the laughing policeman. How do you know he laughs? He must have a sense of humour if he's going out with Bette Lynch. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you, the one thing I don't fancy doing tonight is cooking, so... 
We'll go to that new pizza place in the precinct. I'm told it's very good. And we can leave the young lovers to themselves. Spoil sport. <laughs> See you later, then. All right. I'll call you about half seven. There, look. Who uses that fancy car outside? Been there all day. I know. Billy. What? Alf wants to know who the fancy car belongs to that's outside. Oh, belongs to me. <laughs> You're joking. I'm not. It's mine. What do you do? Win it in a raffle? That's what we keep asking him, but he says not. Tard up. Why is everybody so surprised that I bought myself a motor? Oh, give all it's worth the motor, that. You must, it must have cost you a packet. That's the motor I fancied. Well, I fancy a Rolls, but... Ah, that's one of the differences between you and me, Alf. I always set out to get what I fancy. Well, so if I said I was going to lend you that money that you asked me for... You'd say you wouldn't need it anymore. I'd right. snatch your hand off. Yeah, you need worry, I'm not going to offer it. I oh, know you're not. That's not going to stop me from enjoying myself. As much as it is possible to enjoy oneself in this neck of the woods. Evening. Hi, hi. Hey, Billy. Oh, you're getting a better class of customer in here. There's a very fancy set of wheels outside. Another one. Put him in the picture, will you, Al? That belongs to him, so he says. And I thought there weren't much money to me bathing little boozers these days. Well, there isn't that much. Tony, what a nice surprise. I finished the eight. Well, you never said you were going to. Did I? Anyway, uh, what are you having? I have a plan, please. The boss gave me a ride in his new car today. Did he now? You live in a different world from me, but... I'm not coming to an old bonfire with you, mate. What are you going to do, then? Well, there's a good film on the telly. You're wasting your life, Cherry. <laughs> you reckon? And what do you do? You go to work, you come in here for a pint, then you go home. You watch the telly and you go to bed. Oh, and you lived a few weeks now and again. That's not living, that's not even existing. Don't forget Denise Green. I see her at least three times a week, mate. Ah, sex. Don't knock it, mate. Especially not in the winter when you can't go out. But all your pleasures are bodily pleasures, Terry. Every second is geared to pleasing the flesh. I'm not pleasing my flesh when I'm humping great sides of beef about, am I? I'm punishing it, mate. But what about ambition? What about up here, in the mind? You can have a ball there, Terry, thinking, dreaming, learning. It don't seem I've got you very far, does it? All that learning and thinking. How much did you earn last week? Uh, 80 odd quid after stoppages. I finished up with 120, mate. Right, we'll get me somewhere, though. I'm just abiding me time at the moment, resting before the big leap forward. Yeah? Straight into the dustbin? You'll see. <laughs> Betty, love. Where are you after now? Well, I thought I'd show me new motor to a couple of mates. Well, we're not all that busy, are we? Yeah. If I'm not back by closing, lock up for us, will you? Excuse me, lads. Oh, oh, Cheerio, you gents. Gents. Sit up. It's all right for some. <laughs> Skyving off again, is he? Yeah, looks like it. I'm going to be the boss the next time I come on this earth. Betty long. But he won't. Well, seeing as the young master's blown, mm. and there's hardly anybody in, and I fancy going to a bonfire, I thought perhaps you wouldn't miss us for the last half hour. Us? Me and Tony. Does Tony want to go to a bonfire? Well, he hasn't said, but I'm sure he will when I suggest it. You know what, love? You need locking up. I know, better. Yeah. Oh, he said he just fancied a bottle of stout. Ah, is he a bit under the weather, then? Well, he must be if he's drinking at home. He's a bit off colour, yeah. Actually, you don't look all that hot yourself, Hilda, if you don't mind me saying so. Oh, I'm all right. I have to be. Well, you're the best judge. Thanks. Tell Stan I hope he feels better soon. Yeah, thanks. I will. Tra. I can't say safe journey now, now can I? I want courage, breath and speed. Did you just make that up? I read it somewhere. I like it. Can I light it? You what? At three quid a go? Do me a favour. Anyway, this isn't just a rocket, it's me soul. You what? Oh, never mind. Right. Courage, breath and speed. the sky! He's a nutter. <laughs> oh, how about that? Ah, oh, that was lovely, Curly. Right, well, that's me done for another year. See yous. See you, love. Do you want to go? Yeah. No, you don't. Let's go and sit down. 
Hey, love, is it all right if we sit on your settee? It's going on fair. Well, till it does, then. Please yourself. What are you thinking about? I wasn't thinking about anything in particular. But... But what? I feel sad. I don't know why. Sort of happy sad, though. <laughs> yeah. Pleasantly sad, if it's possible. Do you know I could sit here forever? This settee's wet. Shut up or I'll stick one on you. <laughs> Sorry. Curling is rocking. Yeah. Talk about the hammers as well. Top of the morning to you. Just surfaced, have you? In the crack of dawn. Pull the other one with you. You're still propping up this bar at the crack of dawn. Now listen, Benny, I was gonna give you a bell. Do I remember somebody saying something about a day at the Gigi's? Busy? What's busy? No way, no. The, the Merc's tanked up and raring to go. Why, is your boozer a problem? Huh. Okay, so you've got your missus well trained. And I've got my stuff on the bowl and all. Pardon me. You did say four weeks. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, but I've always made it my practice, you know, to settle up once a fortnight. Well, there's nothing down in the book. Well, I'm not saying you did, Lynn. I oh, should hope not. No, but it's not off mad, Miss Payne, my papers. Can you shed any light on this, Rita? Well, not really. But if Hilda says she's paid, I think we can take her word for it. Oh, no. No, there's no need for that, thank you. I'll pay me bills. It could have just slipped my mind. After all, nobody's perfect, and when you've got a lot on your plate... Hiya! Oh. Morning, Hilda. All done and dusted down at the funny farm, is it? Oh, is it, actors like? Just hoping it won't need much today. Mm. What I'm after is a nice, smoochy LP. Well, Katie Pick. I mean, I've got a fair collection, but this time I don't want any memories. This time I want it all to be new and exciting. Don't tell me, you finally got one at Draymond to bite. Believe it or believe it not, my children. But I have fallen hook, line and sinker for what is commonly called a copper. Must be Starsky and Hutch. Starsky and Hutch can have each other. Their cardboard cutouts have gone on the back of the bonfire. Compared to Police Sergeant Tony Cunliffe, as lodges with Betty, they are as rabbits. I know what happened. He come round to see you, didn't you, and told you to stop chasing Draymond. I'd heard they were nearly a strike. Oh, isn't she witty? I mean, I was expecting a play on the word copper, which could have been uh, wash boy light, which you could have fallen into instead of falling for. Anyway, if I were romantically attached to a policeman, I wouldn't call him a copper. I'd call him an officer of the law. Oh, good thinking, cock. Officer of the law, yeah, touch a class. Mm, Bobby's another good one. I mean, it sounds more matey. I bet you've fancied a few Bobbies in your time and all. I used to rather like Sergeant Dixon. Aye, aye. I can see I'm going to have to watch her. Well, I just think that they're very attractive, the average policeman. And you could do a lot worse, you know. They get very good pensions. If my lady gets him up her stairs, he may never live to draw it. Fancy trip? Day at the races? Champagne dinner to pull up? Who with? The fun-loving fella that happens to own this jalopy, that's all. Take no show for him for a living, have you? Well, if I have, it beats butter and balm cakes, doesn't it? I'll think about that in my old age. Since when, Ilda, my old flower? Have you been on the afternoon shift? Afternoon? Excuse me, but it's not ten o'clock yet. And I'm surprised to see you up so early. 
Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Pebble, but I thought 9am was your starting time. Yes, well, it's all right for some, but I do have other compartments. Hilda, I bet you've got more compartments than British Rail on the quiet. How not did I keep myself busy? Yeah, and on top of your compartments, I bet you've got commitments and all. That's what I said. Yeah, exactly. And what I'm saying is any time you feel you can't cope, just give us a whistle. We'll see what the job centre turns up, shall we? There's no need for hints, thank you very much. I did extra yesterday, so unless a bomb's dropped, or the ceiling's fell in, or you've had a flood... I'd be wrecked. Did you have a stag doing here last night or something? Oh, just a normal crowd, love. Hopefully this will be par for the course. I'm planning on this pub becoming popular. It may be in a backwater, but there's things you can do in backwaters. Oh, give me strength. So we're in the pools now then, are we? Uh-huh. I suppose you've kicked the shirts into touch, along with your dreams of making your first million. Not entirely. That's a good job, because you'll never win out with them selections. You, you, mine, aren't you copying them? When I come upon these, I want to be the sole winner. And there's only eight score draws on coupon. Anyway, I thought you were, uh, employed. I do have my days off, you know. I'm entitled to skive now and then. No, you want to keep off the bevy. Listen, I've strained something in me back. You do it combing your hair, did you, hey, Samson? <laughs> well, you never strain out combing yours, will you? That's for sure. <clears throat> Listen, I was thinking, you know, if this gent's outfitters, this uh, Frank Tyler fella, if he was selling them shirts at seven quid a go, they must have been fair shirts. Mm -hmm. I reckon you and your mate, you must have given them shirts away. No, we didn't give them away. We just sold them this finger cheap like as a taster. Anyway, he's got this uh, shop in the sticks, and what do they know? Well, they obviously know a good shirt when they see one, or two, or 102. Ah, you could sell them all in the road. You see, a up card, I think, is a wedding. Well, up to press, they've been too sharp for you and Mr. Fred Baldwin, or at least this, uh, joker Frank Tyler has. Mm, has he? You wait and see. We haven't played our ace yet. You know, I reckon me mum's right. I reckon you've kissed goodbye to them shirts, and to the brass you laid out. Ain't hey, no danger. That brass will be on the counter, and if it isn't, then, like I said, we're gonna play our ace. And what's that, then? We're gonna put the arm on the joker, aren't we? Use a bit of muscle. Don't tell me you haven't tumbled, Betty Cox. I'm in love, aren't I? Oh, yeah. Anybody I know? <laughs> You're pulling my leg, you are, aren't you, Betty? I'm talking about Tony, your lodger. Don't tell me you've not noticed how smitten he is. Have you not noticed any subtle changes? Singing in the bath, forsaking his press-ups, asking for more sugar in his tea. Well, now you come to mention it, he did say the other morning I found his marmalade a little bit mild. That's it, you see. That's what love does. Sharpens the taste buds. Right, I'm off. And if there's any complaints from his nibs, mm -hmm. do you know, I thought I'd just have to tickle around here this morning, but when I seen the state of the place... Well, it was all right when we left last night, wasn't it, Bet? I didn't notice. Everything's got a sort of radiance anyway. Oh, it'll be Billy and his newfound friends, you know, supping after hours. Oh, he'll never learn, will he? You had a cup of tea, love? I've not had time to turn round. And it's no better when I get home, you know. What, we stand up in bed there and won't shift himself? Hello, mother's meeting time again, is it? Come on, ladies, get mobile. Why, where are we going? Oh, Elder, on the dot tomorrow, eh? Good morning, lads. Holiday time, is it? No, we're both crippled, aren't we? He strained his back and I've twisted my knee. He'll be in the headlines tonight. Star binman out for a week. Council Refuse Department faces injury crisis. Oh, there's only one answer to that. Get legless. <laughs> Serve the invalids, will you, bet? On the double cam, sir. <laughs> uh, hey, got some impressing like sorting out the cellar. I bet you, my love, I'm off to the races for the day. So oh. if you could keep things ticking over for us, I'd be much obliged. <laughs> Do you know, Billy worries me. He really does, you know. Sometimes I don't think he's all there. He's a twit and a wally. I mean, when you compare him with a man who's faced mobs. Oh. Yes, love. Got any crisps, Bet? Hey, Ellen. Thanks very much. Thank you. You know, Mrs. Ogden was right. She did only offer two weeks. Well, how come you slipped up? Well, it's on this bit of paper in the back of the book. I must have meant to enter it up. Well, we didn't press her to pay. I mean, it was her that got on her high horse and insisted. But I just hope I haven't left the skin like. Very probably. 
I mean, Hilda's finances are what's commonly known as on a knife's edge. Oh, go on, men, I feel awful. Well, I'm sorry. I mean, if you come for reassurance, you've come to the wrong shop. I mean, Hilda's life can't be easy. And you making out she's in debt more than she thought she was can't have tickled her. Well, ask yourself, would you have been as keen with Emily Bishop or Alf Roberts or Ken Barlow? Yes, love. Look, if this tailor won't shell out at the death, then he's got a bit of fright, has he? <laughs> yeah. Listen, Capone. We should have had him stretched out over that counter days ago, never mind all your patter. And I just try to play it smooth. I mean, he could see there were many, he could see it in my eyes. Yeah. His knees were knocking. Sometimes a suggestion of violence is enough, you know. I'll give him a suggestion, all right. If I ain't got that 400 nickel in the palm of my hand by this afternoon, he's going to get that down his gob. Hang on. Look, all right, all right. If it's got to be GBH, then that's how it's got to be. But the main thing is, you've got to get down there before that bank closes. Yeah. Then if he comes the funnies, you can get his arm up his back right down the old Sherman tank. Yeah. Nobody diddles Fred G out of 400 nickel and gets yes. away with it. <laughs> Hey, just a minute. What's all this you business? I'm not going down there on my own. And I can't go with you. What with my temper and my fast hands? Listen, I've got a delivery down there. I'm going to pick you up this afternoon, right? Uh, 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 the law's in. Law's... Morning, Betty. Hi, Tony. What should I say, afternoon? Sitting behind that desk in the nick with your very strange idea of time. <laughs> yeah, my sir, it was the same. Half, is it, love? It better be. I'm driving. Oh. I've, uh, I've left you dinner in the oven. I made you a nice hot Oh, that's nice. Thanks. Um... <laughs> Bet's in the back. Oh, she won't be a minute. On duty, is she? <laughs> yeah. Then you know. Never gave it a lot of thought, as a matter of fact. Well, I mean, you know, I thought with, with you and her hitting it off like... Oh, you know, we hit it off, all right. She's good for a laugh, this bit. Which makes a change from all the flack I've been getting from other women. Present company accepted, of course. Yeah. I know what you mean, love. She's right on my wavelength, this bet. Just out for a giggle, you know? Nothing heavy, if you take my meaning. And here she is. The star barmaid, looking gorgeous as usual. I just jumped out of bed, quick lather, and threw on the first things I came across. Correction. The first things I came across were Alf Roberts comms. Oh. How's life been there, love? Oh, routine and yours? Oh, much the same. But let's face it, that bonfire's going to take a lot of beating. You reckon? Not that I shan't be trying. In fact, I've got it all arranged for tonight, and I'm sure you're free. Unless there's a crime wave all of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> You home? Anybody home? Oh. oh, hello. What do you want? Oh, I, I hope it's not inconvenient, but I just felt bound to call. I hope you're not after more brass. Uh, no, not quite the contrary. No, well, I'm a bit pushed, so whatever it is, you best make it snappy. Still in this post, is he? Yeah, well, it's his age, you know. He plus he eats too much, so he gets bilious. Well, I can see you're busy, so I'll, I'll come straight to the point. Basically, it was my conscience that brought me here. Hey? Well, you know that little difference of opinion we had this morning about your paper bill? Oh, yes. Well, you were right, Mrs Ogden. He did just over a fortnight, so... I've come to apologise and to uh, return the money I've overcharged you. Oh. Well, thank you very much, I'm sure. Am I forgiven? Only I thought I might have left you a bit short. Oh, no. No, not at all. No, I could have managed. I do have my bank card, you know. You could have left it till I come in the shop. Oh, no. I mean, I was entirely in the wrong. A personal call was the least I could do. Yeah, well, very kind of you. Very considerate. Much obliged. Look, um... I I'm sorry I was a bit off hand, but, oh. well, I I've been rushed off my feet, you know. Stan's got me up and down them stairs like a yo-yo, and I have to be at Mrs Lowther's in half an hour. She's having a dinner party, wants me to help with the veggies and so on, you know. I suppose I could have said no, but, well, she's got this way of putting things. But, Any road, I, I was just going to pinch five minutes to myself, so if you'd fancy a brew... Oh, no, I'd better not. I've just nipped out now. I've left Rita fuming. Well, the kettle's on. I've only to rinse the cup. <laughs> no, honestly, we've got the evening papers to do and everything. So, well, bye, Mrs. Ogden. So now, then. Right, Betty, look. OK, do Have you got it worked out, then? The wheels are turning, don't you, Fred? Uh, well, they should be, shouldn't they? Listen, Baldwin's back on Monday. I'm not figuring about with that van anymore. I've got to tell Ivy all sorts of things. 
Are you not making it around, then? Oh, my, I can pink lint, aren't I? Look, I've got to get this brass under, otherwise it's it's financial curtains for me, Jacko. Don't you think I know that? Don't you think I'm brassic and all? Yeah, well, listen. Hello. Yeah. What's your next move? I mean, come on, you're the brave, is you? Right, we've only got one car to play, Fred, and I don't think you're going to wreck it. <laughs> Try me. We're going to have to go to Baldwin, show him the cheque and give him the gen. Oh, give off, will you? I'll be right out on my backside then, won't I? Look, I know it's dicey, Fred, but let me do the talking. I'll try and wangle it. <laughs> Famous last words. That's he gave the ladders. Well, let's face it, Fred. This Tyler bloke has going to run, aren't he? We're not going to nail him till the week next flaming Christmas. We won't nail him, but Baldwin will nail me, won't he? <clears throat> Trust me, Fred. Trust I'll you. I'll try and swing it. Oh, <laughs> that'll do the swing in. Trust you. I can feel the rope round my neck now. Ah, the bins is good money, but it's a limited skill. I went into it on impulse, really, well, me being sort of a rebel. I've written off to various firms, but until something happens, I'm thinking about night school, extending me practical skills. I've just been down to the community centre to have a look at the curriculum. At the moment, it's a toss-up between psychology and woodwork. Oh, Hilda, well, love, uh, I've just cashed up. Oh, look, I know it's last minute, I'll put... If you could, just let us have a packet of gravy, Brown, and put it on me, Bill. You'd never think I would open all day. Yeah, well, thanks very much, I'm very grateful. It's just that I've been that pressed for time. I'll carry these. Oh, how nice. Oh, when they say there's no gentleman. Thanks, love. See you. Ah, good night. Only 20 dollars business, this. Give me courier advice. You can gravy powder. Very much, Chuck. I know it's only a cock stride, but what I say is, it's the thought what counts. Well, you seem a bit loaded, like. Yes, well, been helping Mrs. Lowther, you see. She's given me one or two bits and bobs, make a nice supper for Stan. Oh. Would you like to pop up and have a word with him? He's probably having 40 winks, but, uh, well, a tap on the left ear hole with a clog generally wakes him. No, I'd best not. Mrs. Bishop will have the search parties out. Oh, yeah, well, pop in some other time, eh? He likes a bit of company. Yeah, will do. Right. Sweet dreams, Stan. Oh, <laughs> don't you worry. Once he sniffs them lamb chops I've got for his supper. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, love. Good night, love. I'm not saying this is a Ritz, and I'm not saying I do the sort of turnover that old Bernie here does down the Dunk Cow. <laughs> yeah, he's not kidding, my mate here. Yeah, Jack, I could fit this place into my gent. <laughs> <laughs> he comes from Texas, can't you tell? <laughs> you know, this ably lad, if you can't fight, wear a big hat. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind your hat. Tell us about your turnover. Oh, I'll do better than that. You come round one night and no left shirt to you, darling. Is that an invite? I bring my husband. He knows all about turnovers. Uh -oh. It's all he does. Turns over and tells me he's got a headache. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you two uh, girls married, then? Oh, Margie's. I'm separated. He's a chucker out her fellow. Yes, she's right, you know. He, he keeps his hand in on me, he does. He keeps chucking me out. So at the death, I chucked him out. <laughs> Anyways, uh, where's your husband tonight, then, eh, Gordon? My husband's a bookie. He were there, oh. shouting the odds, which he's good at. You won all that money off him. Oh, oh I'm uh, so sorry about that. <laughs> you ought to be. They'll be dragging the cut tomorrow. They're <laughs> <laughs> noisy a lot, aren't they? <laughs> oh, it's been like this nearly every night for the last week. In my opinion, Billy Walker's going very quietly berserk. Oh. Isn't that Bernie Fisher over there? His pal from Don Cow. Six dartboards, four pool tables, disco dancing, strip shows of a dinner, and my lado's trying to match up to him. Anthony, this will not do. He's nearly last orders. I've burned holes in that door. <laughs> Come on, you know you're entirely wrapped up in your career. I'm sorry, love, I've got that for overtime. Who's Betty? Uh, Billy, Billy, let her go early. You think she spies for a mam, you see? Hey, where's my manners? I'm forgetting you two don't know each other, do you? Rita, this is Tony. Tony, this is Rita. Who, when she's not doing good works, playing the trombone in the Sally Army band, runs a toffee shop? <laughs> Me boy, your dream is that running a toffee shop. Oh. Pleased to meet you. Same here. Hey, Pat, we could do with some shorts, especially vodka. I think you'll find there's a case under the stairs. <coughs> Seems like their night's never going to end. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Can I get your refill? 
car. But no, Tom. Got to work in the morning. Nice meeting you anyway. Tom. Tony, listen. I won't be a sec. Billy says I can uh, shove off her. Hang on. <laughs> Bernie can brag about the dung cow as much as he likes. The boozer like this tucked away. Docks around the corner. Come close in time, nobody bothers. So we'll get rid of the punters and get down to the hard stuff. Come 2 a.m., I'll put 25% on the take and I don't go anywhere near a building society. Mm. Oh, it's been a hard day, it really has. The old feet are giving me some gym. Well, I know a good cure for diet feet. Mustard baths? That's part of it. But for starters. I was talking about feet. Why didn't I meet you ten years ago when I was 21? What about that mustard bath? I only do mustard baths, a very special folk, you know. Do I qualify? Just about. I expect the full treatment, you know. Well, I promise. Well, what are we waiting for? This could be the miracle I've been waiting for for years. Goodbye, corns. Come in, Fred Astaire. Right. Through the back, up the stairs. And it's the first door on the left. Now get it right, otherwise my landlord could be in for a bit of a shock. <laughs> Chance, I do no else. She's due here at half past nine to clean up. But look at the state of the place. What a workforce. I don't know why you do it to me. It's not as if I'm easy going. If I was, I could understand you taking advantage. You're a cynical girl. I'm a realistic girl. You can't run a pub without the turns up when it feels like it and scribes half the time it is here. I've got rid of Fred for that sort of paper, and if Hilda's not careful, she's going to go the same way. Oh, no. Hilda, I just hope you know what you're doing. Oh. I'm not used to make my Cyril livid. Oh, I, I hated him coming back from court. It was always the same old story, you know. He'd been giving evidence against this bloke who'd done some, oh, some terrible things. And to hear the magistrate talk, you'd think he'd pinch an apple off a fruit barrel. Yeah, well, things will get worse before they get better. And I'll tell you something else, madam. What? I shan't be much good in a scuffle if I get any more of your breakfast inside me. <laughs> joking. I would like to meet you on a dark night, Doc. Ah, it's a bundle and there's me thinking I'm sexy. Oh, what a shame. Bet thinks you are. Yeah, but she's good for a laugh, is Bet. Yeah. Uh, who was that redhead she introduced me to? Redhead? Oh, Rita. Rita Fairclough, yeah. She lives uh, near the pub number seven. She works at the cabin on Rosamond Street as a little nude agent. She's, uh, she owns it, actually. She's a widow, though. Seems a nice lady. She is a nice lady. All right, you ready? Oh, it's going to be going to Blackpool for the day. Oh, come on, yeah. Oh, I'll give you a lift down. Can't have you lying in the gutter, can we? Oh, hey, hang on. I've had my whack, and that we're in the dark. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. I bet it was. We were the whole farm, <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, hello. Well, at least you're ready for work. The only trouble is you're at the wrong end of the street. Yes, I know. Well, I'll just clear up a bit and get Stanley's breakfast and then I'll be down. He doesn't want much, so I won't be a minute. You won't be any time at all, because if you're not through that door now, and I do mean now, doing the job I pay you for, then you might just as well not bother. time but well well I never even got upstairs last night because I felt that rotten and I've got I've got to get Stanley's breakfast Hilda you stay where you are no, I've you're got doing to... nothing till you've had a cup of tea yes but and the... then I'll see to Stan all right I'll come and show you where things are you do nothing of the stop I tell you you stay where you are There you go, a total misrepresentation of the facts, which clearly state that Burma was won by General Lord Wingate and the Chindits. Not that I was there myself personally, but I made it my business to read about it, because you know what they say? A little learning is a dangerous thing. Drink deep or taste not the free and spring. And you know what that means? If you learn about war from films, you get a totally wrong impression. I'll give you, for instance... Oh, can you give us a hand? Do you mind, Mr. Walker? I'm in the middle of a serious discussion. Yes, well, press the pause button, will you? There's a good lad. Hilda, she's in a bad way in there. She's flaked out. How do you mean? Well, she's not collapsed or anything, but she's in a very bad way. She oughtn't to be left on her own. Now, I've given her and Stan a cup of tea, but I've got to go to the brewery, so I wonder if... I'll go if, if you uh... can spare me. Oh, of course I can. I'll come with you. I've picked up a bit of medical now. I'm in my time. Now, personally, remember what you just said. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Don't worry, I shan't go beyond the uh, bounds of my knowledge. I know my limits. You could have fooled me. Who, <laughs> me and all. Hey, listen, if there's all you need, brandy, anything. Thanks, love. All right. Oh, hey, you'd no need to go to all this, Now, Barbara. will you just do as you're told for once in your life? Now, I've got to go to the brewery. These two are going to stay with you. Oh, I'm all right, really. Now, will you listen? They're going to stay with you, and I don't want to see you back at work until you're good and ready, all right? I'll come in later on. You'll do nothing of the sort. Now, you see, she has a good rest, and if she doesn't, give her a good hiding. Right. You heard what he said? You're making me feel like an invalid. What were you doing this morning when I arrived, then? Training for the next Olympics? Don't worry. She's in good hands. All right. Take it easy. Right. Sugden's in charge. Have you uh, had anything to eat this morning, Hilda? Oh, I've had a cup of tea. It's all I want. But it's not all you're going to get. You need some food inside to make you feel better. So let's have your order. Yeah, he's right, you know, Hilda. You should eat something. Yeah. Yeah, well, um... A soft-boiled egg would be nice. A soft-boiled egg? Well, that's hardly stretching my culinary talents, is it? I mean, you know to be afraid of, you know. I fed 150 from one end of Western Desert to t'other and never complained. How about some nice crispy bacon? Percy, if that's what she wants. All right. Two soft-boiled eggs it is, and two slices of thinly cut bread and butter. Yeah. Or would you prefer soldiers? Uh, oh, no. No, bread and butter, please. Right, coming up. Oh, you're very good. Oh, rubbish. If there's out wrong with me, I'll expect you round at my place. Now then, what about Stan? Oh, well, uh, Billy took him some bread and jam up earlier on. It's all he wanted. Right, see if he fancies a cup of tea. Oh, that'd be nice, yeah. Oh, oh and Deirdre, don't let on I'm a bit uh, off colour. I don't want him worrying. All right, then. Where do you keep your eggs? Same again, please, Bet. Going to Fern Lake, aren't you? We've only been open ten minutes. One thing about being banned from driving, you can sup as much as you like. Hey, blessed are them that can find good in everything. Bossing? Is it brewery wine? Did you want it? Mm. Just checking. Use your phone. Go on, yard face, so-and-so. It, it's only local. Bowling's? Is Fred G there, love? See if you can catch him for us, there's a love. Local? You could have gone to the front door and shouted. It's private. You hear that, Betty? It's private. We'll best listen. We'll best down. You want it? Mm. Fred, 
It's Jack here. He's Baldwin there. Look, if you get half a chance, see if we can get him over to Rovers at dinner time, would you? Because I want to talk to him, that's why. Look, if you think I am wandering about for the rest of my flaming life with a check for 432 quid in my pocket, you're very much mistaken. And I'm not framing it, neither. That is why I want to talk to him to see if he'll cash it for us. I'll spin him a yarn, won't I? Of course he will, it's the way I tell him. Look, don't you worry. You won't get the push. I won't even mention your flaming name. Look, you just see if you can steer him over here, all right? Complicated, isn't it? Life. Take my word for it, Mrs. Ogden. It's an established medical fact that once a body stops manufacturing its vital juices, which it does when you let yourself get run down, you're in trouble. Now, what you need is a tonic. Iron for blood. Do your power a good. I wish uh, he's uh, having a little sleep. He's had his cup of tea. Oh, you, you didn't say... No, I didn't. He must have had a good night, actually, because he didn't even realise you hadn't been up to bed. Ah, bless him. I'll tell you, what she wants is a bottle of tonic. She needs more than a tonic. How do you mean? She needs the doctor. I'm going to send for him. Dr. Meakin, isn't it? Oh, I know. I don't want to bother the doctor. Now, listen, madam. You carry on the way you're doing and you're going to finish up in bed and you'll be no use to stand them, will you? She's right, you know. And like us not to give you that tonic I was talking about. Yeah, all right, then. Right, I'll ring up from home. Can you stop with her? Ah, of course I can. I'll make sure she gets this breakfast down there. Bottle of shandy, please. How long's he been in? Well, let's see. He was waiting outside when we opened. Mm. And then he left for his reading matter. Mind you, he weren't gone long enough for his beer to go no. flat. <laughs> and to listen to him, he'll have been job hunting all morning. Here, Dad, where have you been this morning? Look at the world. Where do you think I've been? I got in just before you. You know, if it's true what they say about criminals coming from rum homes, I should be a mass murderer. Now, Terry, it's your dad you're talking about, you know. Don't I know it? I don't think he needs reminding Bessie long. Hi there. Hello. How's the invalid? Hello. Oh, not so good. Who's this then? Hilda. She's not so clever this morning. She's worn out, poor soul. Who's with her? Percy. He's been there since 11 o'clock. Heaven help her, she'll need, Doctor. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, twist. Oh, bust. You should have stuck. You had 18. Oh, should I? Yeah. I can't concentrate. Not a bit, Doctor. You stay put. I'll let him in. <clears throat> There's your patient in dying need of a tonic. Thank you. Well, now then, Mrs. Ogden, what have you been doing to yourself? She's been overdoing it, hasn't she? She was in state of collapse when we took over. Thanks, Mr. Sugden. Would you give us a minute, then, Mr. Sugden? Yeah. Yes, all right, then. Now then, Mrs. Ogden. Well, uh, it started last night, actually. I I'd been up to see my husband. Is he not so well again? Well, he's up and down, you know. He's not too good at the moment, though. It's him what should have had the doctor, but you know what he's like. Still, while you're here, I'd, uh, I'd like you to take a look at him, if you can spare a minute. I will, but first things first, let's have a look at you. Ah, Mike, Mike! <laughs> But I mean, I couldn't stand a strain. She's holding down what? Three jobs and looking out the stand. Up and downstairs 20 times a day. She runs herself ragged, and everybody has a swipe at her. They were in this morning. Hey? We're talking about Hilda. They've sent for doctor. Good. Oh, don't, Tom. You've come back from the brewery without them spirits out your fall, lovey. <laughs> I don't get me spirits from the brewery, not when I can get them cheaper somewhere else. Look, you shouldn't do that. The brewery's not going to like it. Well, the brewery will have to lump it, especially if the common market has its way. <coughs> oh, dear. Tony said he might come in this lunchtime. Oh, I doubt it, lovey. Not from what he was saying when he brought me in this morning, you know. He's got a busy day ahead of him. That'll teach me. Never get involved with a copper. I know, love. I've had some of it. <laughs> of course you have. Still, yours worked out happy enough. Yeah. Yeah, it did. <laughs> It's a long time. Six and a half minutes, Mr. Ogden. 
It's barely had time to unbutton your husband's pyjama top, let alone run rule over him. Well, it seems longer than that. He's not been well, you know. Been off his food and that's not like Stan. I've been at him the past week to let me get the doctor in, but no. Well, fair's fair. You're not much better yourself, are you? Oh, I suppose not, but... Well, I'd rather not know. You know what that is, don't you? That's ostrich talk. Bring your head in sand. Now, you can say what you like about this National Health Service, but they've got all the latest innovations up in them hospitals. I mean, they might as well be operating with Amazon children if you're going to sit at home saying out and suffering, mightn't they? I said, mightn't they? No wonder you're feeling the strain, Mrs Ogden. It can't have been easy looking after him. How is he, Doctor? I'll tell you what I'd like to do, and it's as much for your benefit as Mr Ogden's. I'd like him to go into hospital for a couple of days, just for tests, nothing more. And it'll give you a chance to have a rest. Hospital? You know, you heard what he said, for tests. I've been telling the doctor you've got all the latest innovations in them hospitals, am I right? I'll organise an ambulance if you could pack him a few things, just for a couple of days. Oh, yes, I will. I'll help her. There's no hurry. You're not on the telephone? Uh, no. Not to worry, I'm going straight back to the surgery and I'll be in to see you again tomorrow. Oh, thank you. Now, don't let her do too much. No, all right. If you could get this made up for her. Yes. This'll be a tonic. That right, Doctor, something for her blood. Just follow the instructions on the bottle. Thank right. you. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. I don't want Stan to go to hospital. It's the best thing that could happen. It'll get him sorted out and give you a chance to rest your weary head. And start by taking weight off your feet. I'll go and get your tonic for you. They're not worth thinking about. You're right, they're not. <laughs> Good afternoon. And good afternoon to you too, madam. I'll have a gazette, please. Police or Weatherfield? Weatherfield. I get to read the other one for now. Weatherfield Gazette for the gentleman, Miss Riley. Thank you. Thanks. Very pleasant in the pub last night? Yes, there was a good crowd in. You weren't there. <laughs> Thank you. Perhaps I'll bump into you again sometime. Shouldn't be difficult. Bye. Bye. Who was that? Hands off. That's Betty's lodger, the new man in Bet Lynch's life. Oh, that's the famous Sergeant Cunliffe, is it? You little tiger, you. a bad lad really you know Billy I think Jersey spoiled him a bit they live it up a bit there don't they so they tell me I've never been <laughs> I didn't expect to see you here this afternoon well I had a call round the corner so I thought I'd pop by for a cup of tea with my favourite landlady that was a bit disappointed that you didn't come in oh well, she's just lonely Betty like the rest of us you know you me Rita did you say her name was just a lot of lonely people looking for company Your gentleman friend was in the cabin earlier on. I just hope you treated him right. He got VIP treatment. Nice lad, isn't he? Nice is lovely. Yeah, well, somebody said they'd seen an ambulance outside. And I naturally assume it's what it's something like, you know, from what I've heard, like. Well, I mean, that's a natural assumption, isn't it? But it's like I said, you know, I and all the ins and outs haven't been there throughout. So how's she taking it? Not so good. She's weary, that woman. Weary. She has a rough time of it, don't she? Well, it's local pastime. If you feel frustrated, yeah. kick Hilda. You've done your share. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not denying that. Whose shout is it, anyway? Oh, it's my shout. Uh, could have a drink here, landlord, please. All right. Uh, it's your friend, Bernie, Mr. Fisher. The man with the wandering hands. Oh, good. Uh, look after this spot, will you? Yes, gentlemen. Uh, same again for the lads, and uh, will you have one, Mrs. Fairclough? Uh, telepathy. I was just going to ring you. <laughs> Great minds think alike, that's what I was going to suggest. All right, well, what time do you reckon? No, no, 11 would be fine. Hey, 
Listen, what about the girls? Are they free? <laughs> no, I know they're not free in that way. Mine cost me a bomb. Yeah. Yeah, no, OK. Well, I'll see all three of you about 11, then. Ciao. Hi, Jinx again tonight, is it? Why not? Can you join us? Sorry, I've got to the plan. I don't believe it. It's a tail. Come on over here. Have I got a tail for you? I've probably heard it. Not this one you've got. I've been doing a little bit of business lately, you know, turning over the honor on this coin anyway. Cut a long story short. I get the chance of these shirts, all quality stuff, so I sticks me, uh, me capital in, you know, as such as it is, and I sells them at a decent profit to this fella who's got this chain of gents outfitters. Any, anyway, any road, yesterday, I'm in his office, clinching deal, sorting out contracts and that, and I start daydreaming, don't I? Daydreaming about me being a big business tycoon like you. And, it, and when he, and how it happens, on how it happens, I don't rightly know, but when he asks me who to make the, you're going to laugh here. When he asked me who to make the check out of, I must have given him your name, me daydreaming like I was. Anyway, gets home, looks at the check. Just look at that. There, I knew you'd laugh. Very funny. Flaming hilarious, isn't it? So what I was thinking was if you could see your way clear to putting that through your bank, you know, your bank account, giving me the cash and everything's right then. Hey, you can't believe it, can you, then? Well, why didn't you just take it back to him, get him to order the name, initial it, and everything will be all right? Well, we did first thing this morning, but he flew out at Flipping Caribbean, hadn't he? Eight o'clock from Flipping Ringway. You're not in this with G, are you? Felonious Red. Oh, come on, do me a favour, Mike. I mean, would, would I go partners with a layabout like him, eh? Well, you haven't had your heads together the last couple of days, haven't you? Look, I'll tell you what I'll do, then. Uh, I'll put it through my bank, and when it's cleared in a couple of days, you can have the cash, all right? Who's winning, lads? Can't go better than that, eh? Now, listen, uh, you being a big businessman like me, you'll understand what I'm going to tell you. If I put this cheque through my bank, <coughs> it's got to go through my books, isn't it? So the tax people are going to pick it up. So I'll have to deduct the tax off it, won't I? Or I'll be out of pocket. Say, what, uh, 30%? Well, you're not losing anything, are you? I mean, you were going to declare it and pay the tax on it anyway, weren't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know why you didn't take this on a bus ride out of town. Find a strange bank, open a bank account under the name of Mike Baldwin, then when the cheque was cleared, take out the cash. So you probably thought of that and decided to do it the honest way, did you? I'm impressed. Here, has something happened? How unusual. Oh, uh, just brought you a couple of bottles round, you know, seeing as you're on your own. Oh, Terry, that is nice of you. Uh, Why, you come in a minute? I won't if you don't mind. Uh, I've got a date. Oh, I won't keep you then, but thank you very much. Oh, it's OK, yeah. Uh, just... Uh, Give Stan my best wishes when you see him, won't you? Yes, I will, love. Enjoy yourself. Right. OK, then. Ta-da. ta, -da. ta -da. <laughs> Empty your glasses, please. One minute to law break in. Well, that's been a very pleasant evening. Thank you for your company. Not at all. You know, there's one thing I can't stand is drinking on my own. I think that's the first step to perdition. There's a saying about it, if I could only remember it. Right, I'll just go and do a tour at neighbourhood, make sure everything's in order. I'll say good night to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <coughs> right, you ready then? Yep. You go to the chippy, I'll go and relieve Emily. She don't like missing her beauty right. sleep. Or should we do a tour of the neighbourhood, make sure all's in order? <laughs> oh, hello. 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 Right, let's have your glasses, gentlemen. We've got the law in. It's you. Long time no see. Work, love. Curse the drinking classes. Do you fancy a Chinese? I could rustle you up an omelette or something. Not tonight, kid. I'm flaked out. It's been the devil of a day. Oh, there you are. Oh. Got the car outside. Fancy a lift. Oh, lovely. If you've nothing else to do. No, I was just telling no, Bet. I can't wait to get into my pit. Oh, right. <clears throat> but see you tomorrow, then. I'll be here. Bye. No need to rush, gentlemen, if you fancy making a night of it. Oh, well, I wouldn't mind. What about you? No, I'm not ready for Bet. Great. We'll have a little party then. I've got some friends coming in later. Oh, not those two old ravers you had in the other night. Oh, you keep your hands off. They're spoken for. Bet's available though. <laughs> Are you stopping for one? I'm not yeah. doing no overtime. You're a guest, kid, a guest. Yeah. Billy, what is all this? Buying your booze from the cash and carry? Drinking after hours? Well, all lends to the excitement, doesn't it? Life's for enjoying, so enjoy it. <clears throat> We 
wish I could afford one of them. Who said I can afford it? Well, your after hours taking should cover that, surely. I bought a wheel, at least. Come back tonight. Help me buy another one. Yeah, might do that. You needn't be frightened of hurting them tables, you know. Hey, let's have no more of your sarky comments. I'm only a standing. My professional expertise lies in other areas rather than shifting muck. It must do. Watching you work, it's like watching an elephant balancing on one leg. You are? Well, he doesn't do it very well, but it's amazing he can do it at all. Oh, I can balance on one leg all right. Just cleaning I'm not right good at. Oh, uh, Billy, love. What? Well, seeing as I've come in at the crack of dawn, and I've thrown myself wholeheartedly into helping you out in your hour of need... Give over, you'll have me in tears in a minute. Come on, what is it you want? Time off later this morning, love. Time off in lieu, as we say in the cleaning trade. Well, you'll have to... What the hell are you doing here? Well, the same as I've been doing every morning for the last 20 years, me work. What do you think? Hilda, you've been told you've got to rest. Oh, yes, I know, but I can't, can I? I'm not cut out for sitting around doing nothing. Anyway, Rob, what would this place be like if I did? Well, I was wafting the odd duster. Exactly. Be like a tipping next to no Hilda, time. Hilda, I can't let you do it. Doctor's orders are you've got to rest. Oh. Now, you don't have to like it, but you've got to do it. And your own personal specialist is coming round to check and all. Me what? Dr. Lowther. Him you clean for. He's been on the phone. He hasn't? Yeah. I was going to come round to your house and tell you he's calling round at your house this morning. Oh, heck no. The place is in a right state. Did he say what time? Well, half ten. Hilda, oh. it's you he wants to see, not your house. There's washing still out and I don't know what. And don't you be worrying about us. Fat chance of that, bless her. She'll be polishing coals in his honour. Oh, let's hope he can persuade her to slow down because somebody's got to. So, is it all right, Billy, me time off? All right, go on, but try and be back by dinner time rush, all right? I will. Betty! What, love? Look, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I don't want you to confirm out or tell me out, right? I, I can't tell you out, look, because I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just that there's been this talk down at the station about the Rovers. Apparently, your new landlord has taken liberties serving after hours. Billy. Yeah, you could do him a favour, tell him to ease off a bit. Yeah, I will, love. But you see, the trouble with Billy is, he's always been very ambitious. He's always had these great ideas. Him and 10,000 others, yeah. Look, I'm not, I'm not trying to defend him, love, you know, for stopping open. Well, you don't need to, not to me. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. he can stay open all night. It's just that those whose job it is, will nick them for it sooner or later, and I don't want you to get down there one day and find the shutters are up. It won't come to that, will it? It has been known, yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, Mrs. Ogden. Oh, uh, Dr. Lowther, <laughs> do come in. I rang the pub to ask them to tell you the time. Yes, yes, they, they told me. They're very good like that. Good. Uh, won't you go through, Doctor? Thank you. Hmm. I'm, uh, I, I, I'm afraid the place is in a bit of a mess with me not being the usual self. Well, I'm very glad to see that it is. The last thing we want is you worrying about housework. Oh, yes. Well, uh, do sit down, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, can I uh, can I offer you anything? A, a glass of sherry, perhaps? Oh, no, really, thank you. <laughs> I can't stay very long. Uh, Mrs. Ogden, you don't uh, often have a glass of sherry in the mornings, do you? I mean, it's a habit that's easier to start than to stop. Oh, it, it's some we got left over from last Christmas, Doctor. Of course. <laughs> well, that Mrs. Lard, that she sends her kind regards. Oh, very good of her. And we both hope that Mr. Ogden will soon be back in good health. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes. I, oh, yes, and she said, you're not to worry about the job. It'll still be there as soon as you feel up to it. Oh, well, I'll be as right as rain in a day or two, as soon as I get Stanley back. Yes, but we mustn't rush it, you know. I mean, your Stanley's been very well taken care of where he is. Oh, yes. Where is he, by the way? Weatherfield General, Ward 6. Well, there you are, nothing better. <laughs> there isn't. No, you're not to worry about Stanley. Uh, he's being well looked after, and other people are worrying about him there. You just concentrate on getting yourself fit and well again. Yes, well, I, I, I feel a lot better already. Mm. Is something the matter, Doctor? Yeah. No, no, no. It's just that I've had an idea. Will you be here this afternoon? Well, yes, I suppose Excellent. so. All this late night drinking we've been hearing about, is it? No, it's just an headache I don't seem to be able to get rid of. 
Well, I know what I've got at it first thing in the morning. It usually relates to what I've been supping the night before. <laughs> Not that it happens often. Oh, I'm sure. Well, uh, I might have had a couple of pints more than usual. I mean, it's not hard to, is it, when you're used to landlords kicking it out? I mean, uh, it comes like automatic, doesn't it? I mean, when they go on serving, you go on drinking. <laughs> when they go on and on serving, that's when the trouble starts. Right. Yeah. Anyway, it's 90p for your uh, tablets and your balm, Kate. Mm. We're not charging it for water, are we? Oh, no, we'll let him have that for note. You're all out, Al. No, I'll tell you, there's something is said for the English last name, laws. They might sound deaf to foreigners, but I'll tell you, they don't have to stop a lot of headaches. Mm. I'll see you. Yeah. Try, mm. love. <laughs> Where does he get his daft ideas from? Who, oh, Bill? No, Billy Walker. Oh. I mean, all the years that Annie and Jack kept the Rovers, and then Annie kept it by herself, I don't think there was so much as a bit of lemon across that counter once time was called. Well, that and Billy were a changeling, you know. Furry swapped it for somebody else's kid. That wouldn't surprise <laughs> me, neither. <laughs> well, am I that much of a shock? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Come in, I just thought you'd be working this one. I got time off for good behaviour. I don't suppose you're looking for Betty, are you? No. <laughs> no? I just got an hour off and I thought, now, who shall I call on? Who have I not seen for quite a while? Me. Well, you were the first person that sprang to my mind, yeah? I'm sorry, love. Somebody should have warned you. Couples in a regular social life don't go together. I wouldn't have taken any notice. Folk have been warning me about one thing and another ever since I was at infant school. And somebody said, don't sit next to Dennis Perkins, he's got mates. But you did. Yeah. I haven't half regretted it since. <laughs> I was going to ring you, but, well, all things just piled up. So, what are you working today? I'm off today. I'll tell you what, I'll come round tonight, assuming you're working there. Oh, aye. They don't give us full days off. Well, not unless there's a total eclipse and Oldham Athletic have just won a test match. Which is unlikely. Mm-hmm. Look, I've got some business in town. I'll give you a lift back. Uh, I'm not in that much of a rush. Nobody's going to come looking for me. No, but as I say, I've got some business in town. Can't it wait? No. All right, so I'll go quietly. Although if I was the sort of girl who weren't right sure of herself, I might just get the feeling that you were trying to get rid of me. Just as well you're not that sort of girl then, isn't it? I'll get my jacket, we'll be off, right? Sure. Tony? Yeah? I will see you tonight, I wonder. 99% sure, yeah. Only 99? Well, I've got this business, I might be tied up. Yeah, love it. It's not like Bet to go swanning off, you know. Well, she said it was somewhat urgent. She said she'd be back for the lunchtime rush. Well, you better be quick or she'll miss it. Hey, Billy, there's something I've got to tell you, love. Leave it till later, will you? I'll lose count if I don't. Don't then, Betty. Oh. Uh, can you make us one of them delicious cheese and chutney sandwiches of yours on brown bread with a pickled onion? Look, we've got a bit of a rush on at the moment. We've only got ham. We'll back to. Sounds like it's laughed to. Yeah. You know, that's a real reason for the unemployment situation in this country, you know. Oh, cheese and chutney sandwich? No, nobody takes waiting on as a serious occupation. Now, over on the continent, half the population's waited on. You release that lot onto the labour market, they have door queues twice as long as ours. Well, let's talk about door queues, if you don't mind. Some of us coming here to get away from them. And nothing turned up yet, then? No. I'm waiting for the upturn in the market. They're all talking about, I blame the high interest rates in America, myself. Oh, yeah. yeah. They were what got your breath alive, were they? I'll ignore that. Find a bit of please, better than that. I, uh, I'll let you know if something comes into the office, should I? You know, I mean, it might give you a head start. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, thanks very much. Hey, you're frightening him now. He's turned white as a Ava, well, you know why that is. Cause I've just found out I've left my wallet in the house and you're going to have to pay for these drinks. You weren't leaving because I weren't here, were you, Kenneth? Uh, that wasn't the only reason. Well, hurry back soon. Yeah, please. Oh, look who's back. I thought you'd gone on your holidays. I know, I'm indispensable, aren't I? Yeah, but you're not here yet. That's two parts, though. That's two, for which my only son is going to pay. God bless his little cotton oh. sickness. He's got no flaming choice. <laughs> You'll never guess who I bumped into, Betty. Oh, well, you better tell us then. Tony. Oh, and he were passing, so he give us a lift. Anyhow, he'll be in tonight. Oh, well, that was handy, wasn't it? <laughs> it was fate, Betty. It works like that sometimes. Do you know the pair that's a Penzance, then? Not all of them. <laughs> it's very jolly. I mean, I know they're only amateurs, but they're ever so good. Mm. And this Mrs. Littimer, you know, the one that's friendly with Emily, well, she once did an audition for a summer season at Morecambe. 
No, well, I'll probably end up stopping in watching telly. Oh, well, it's up to you. I'll be back in about an hour. Is anything you want me to bring you back? No, Ta. Oh, bye. Draw. Sure. Don't you fancy? Not in the magazine line, no. Oh. I'll have a pack of tuning. 12p. I enjoyed our little chat in the Rovers the other night. Yes, so did I. In fact, I was hoping we might get together again sometime, like tonight, for example. Well, from what I've been hearing, you've not got much on. Well, you might also have heard me say I'll be staying in watching telly. Well, change your mind. We'll take a ride out, have a drink somewhere. Look, it's very nice of you to ask me, but... Uh, well, don't be offended if I say no, will you? I'd be disappointed. No, only um, I've got out of the habit of going out. And anyway, well, let's just leave it at that, eh? If you're worried about any other commitments, I hey, I've said no. Let's not fall out about it. That's the last thing I want. But I'll be asking you again. I promise you that. <laughs> Now then, Mrs. Ogburn, uh, about that idea I mentioned having this morning. Oh, yes, Doctor. You see, it was coming in here again. It reminded me the last time when Mrs. Lather and I came, and Mr. Ogden and I got talking about the war. And what did we find out? Lo and behold, we were both in the Eighth Army in the Western Desert, facing up to that Rommel chap. <laughs> Small world. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> and it would have been even smaller had we lost. Oh, yes, I'm sure. Mm. Anyway, uh... What was I talking about? About you and Stan both being desert rats. No, no. Uh, Collingwood House. Pardon? It's an old soldier's convalescent home near Southport. And I'm on the board for my sins. Oh, very nice. <laughs> well, the long and the short of it, and strictly between you and me, I've made a few inquiries, and I'm certain that I can get Stanley in there for a week or two once he comes out of hospital. Now, how about that, eh? Hmm? Well, it's uh, very kind of you, Doctor, but... Well, I I'm sure he'd be happier at home. He never sleeps well unless he's in his own bed. Yes, that may be, but we've got you to consider as well, Mrs Ogden. Let you get your strength back. Yes, well, I I'll mention it to him, Doctor. I'll be seeing him at visiting time tonight. Is it's not like a hospital. I mean, there's uh, snooker, darts. They've even got a bar. I've often thought I wouldn't mind a spell there myself. Yes, I I'm sure it's lovely, but... Well, it's just that we wouldn't be together, would we? I know it's more work for me when we are, but... Well, that's what we got married for. In sickness and in health. Not in convalescent homes. Right, yes, he's a bit thin out there. The paper's not come yet. I'll give him a chance and not do for another ten minutes. Well, that's the way it is when you're out of work. You know, your day drags and there's this yawning chasm between chucking out time and tea. I can imagine. Oh, wait, you don't mind if I hang about, do you? Oh, there's no need for that, Mr. Duck. But I'll, I'll get one of the boys to drop one off for you when he passes your house, shall I? Oh, you all right, Maeve. Tell very much. That's what I call a first-class service, is that? That's what I call somebody who can't wait to hear the end of a story. Well, what happened? He just asked you out, did he? Yes, and I said no, thank you. Oh, well, I mean, was it him? I mean, that you weren't keen on, or did you just not feel ready for that sort of thing yet? Do you want to fasten me up to a lie detector before I answer that, Look, or what? I'm just showing an interest, Rita, like you do all the time with the men in my life. True. Well, I wasn't thinking about Len, if that's what you mean. Though I think it is said, go ahead, enjoy yourself. Oh, he would. And it's not as if I dislike the fella. He's better company than most, when he's got his own teeth. Oh, thanks, so. But what he's also got is a lady friend called Beth Lynch. That's still going on then, sir? Well, I'd have said so, and I'm fairly sure she would, though whether he has different ideas. Anyway, I didn't want to find out. I've got a question for both of you, this is. Can either of you tell me what that stamp is? It arrived on my doormat this morning. I give in. It's definitely foreign. Yeah. Now, he's a chap that might do a bit better. Oh, yeah, better than what? These two tell me where that stamp's from. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a bit of a clue. Right? Play it again, Sam. Oh, uh, not Ronald Reagan. Humphrey Bogart. Casablanca. Correct. Very good. So that stamp is? Casablanca. Moroccan. 
Moroccan, he's got it. Now, that came from my, uh, my niece, that did, Helene. She's on a cruise ship, you know. Look here. Uh, yes. Right, are we, uh... Yeah, I'll get the coat. <clears throat> He says she's going to be arriving at Southampton tomorrow, which is a very rare thing for her, being back on native soil. What is she, a captain? No, hairdresser. It's been a good job for her. It's taken her all over the world. Right. See you tomorrow. Uh, right. Oh, by the way, is there any news of Stan Ogden? Anyone heard how he is? Oh, yeah. No, I haven't. I thought I might pop round to Seal tonight, see how she's bearing up. Yeah, yeah, we must do that. Right, bye. Toronto. At least she's got all her friends around her. She can't want more than that. No, uh... I remember when Elaine went in for hairdressing, one or two in family thought she, she could have done better for herself because she was always very bright, very quick. Oh, quick at getting away, you mean? And now she talks about New York like we talk about Macclesfield. She knows it that well. And the folks she's met. I don't need bacon. Streaky, medium cut. And yet she never forgets her Uncle Percy. Never forgets her Uncle Percy. she has been to Caribbean anywhere in the world. She always remembers me when she's approaching these shores. I'll bet. Right, ladies, I'll be back for closing time, OK? You mean official closing time? Yes, that's what I mean, Betty Love. Uh, then I'll take over and you two can go, OK? Sounds OK to me, Chief. Good. Oh, Bet, there uh, is a little favour you could do for me, if you wouldn't mind. Well, almost anything. Well, I'll be bringing some mates back, so a plate full of sandwiches would not go amiss. I wouldn't do it for everybody. I should hope not. Uh, Billy, look. Huh? All this late opening, you've got to get yourself into a lot of bother, you know. And it's not just me saying that, lovey. No? Now, I've been asked to pass something on to you from my lodger. He is a police sergeant. I see. Well, tell him thanks for the warning, and any time he fancies a late taster, he knows where to go. Oh, another big night plan? Well, you have it to do, don't you? Where to this time? Well, I fancied a little flutter on the tables. Do you want to come? No, not for me. I do my gambling in the rag trade. At least yeah. I know what the odds are. Yeah. Suit yourself. Excuse me. Well, I can't see any grey hairs, but it must be happening all the same. What must be? You growing old, turning down the chance of a night out. Ah, oh, well, that depends what the company is. Mind you, staying in has everything to recommend it, but uh, then again, that depends on what the company is. Spare me the sordid detail. I will. See ya. Bye, my. Do you want a refill, love it? Ah, oh, go on, I'll have one for the road, right. even though I'm only going halfway down the street. Oh. <laughs> Can I ask you something, though? And I do have a reason, I'm not just being nosy. Well, mother. Well, you know, Bet was going out with that lodger of yours, Tony Cundy. Yeah. Is that still going on, do you know? Well, I was hoping somebody was going to tell me. Oh. Well, you see, from what he's been saying and how he's been acting just lately, I don't think he's all that keen. But you see, Bet's expecting him round here to take her out tonight. Your guess is as good as mine, love it. Sit down, Alf. I'll, uh, I'll make us a pot of tea. Oh, right, thanks. Anyway, how's our Stanley? Have you seen her today? Yeah, went in tonight. You don't get much privacy in them wards, though. There was this poor fella in the next bed. The way his wife was going on at him, you'd have thought he'd got poorly on purpose just to get away from her. <laughs> Not that you could have blamed him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, Stan's much the same, thanks very much. They say he had a good night, but, well, he's not out the wood yet. They seem very nice, though. Yeah, well, these take, things take time, don't they? Anyway, how are you? Oh, I'm all right. Well, I would be if I could just get back to work and something like normal. Well, I wouldn't be in too much of a hurry to do that if I were you, Hilda. <laughs> oh, not you as well. Hey? Well, I have Dr Lowther around this morning. You know him as a do for. Oh, yeah. Come round this afternoon and all. He's got this idea about getting Stan into some convalescent home. Oh, well, I know he means well, but... Well, I was brought up with the idea that you... you look after your own. You don't go shoving them in homes and such like. I I'll just put the tea in the pot. Well, I should think he's got your best interest at heart, Hilda. I mean, we can't always look after folk, no matter how much we want to, can we? And maybe Dr Lowther thinks that you need as much of a rest as Stanley does. I mean, you won't get that if you dash it up and downstairs, will you now? Eh? <laughs> Hilda? Oh, hey. I'm frightened he won't come out, Alf. He'll never come out of that hospital. Now, come on. I'm sorry. Nay, there's no to be sorry about, love. Let's turn that off. Come on, let's get you sat down for a minute. You won't come again the way I'm behaving. Well, I'm not if I hear you talking like that, I won't, no. No, it, it was just seeing him lying there. Didn't seem to know who I were. Yeah, well, it'd be... It'd be on medication, won't it? Anyway, you know he's in good hands, don't you? Oh. 
He's had these dues before, hasn't he? Oh, I know, yeah. Well, there you are. Then before you know it, he'll be home again. He'll be calling for staying out late at British Legion. If I could only have him back here, I'd never call him for out again. No. Well, I didn't really mean that, you know. Uh, anyway, I, I think you ought to think about what Dr Lowther says, you know, about Stanley going into this convalescent home. Yeah. Yeah, I will. It'll only be for a week or so, you know. Then it'll be back to normal. That's it. Been it for a long time. My gum, you've timed that well. Yeah, we've got a bit delayed. The rest are coming on. Oh, did you do them sandwiches? Yeah. Great. For my for Yeah, fine. All right, drinking up time, please, gentlemen. You can stick around if you like. Just want to get rid of the riffraff. No, thanks. I fancy an early night. So do I. About one o'clock, probably. No, thanks all the same, Billy. Suit yourself. Yeah. I know it's didn't ask me. I suppose I'm part of the riffraff, am I? Count your blessings, cock. Think about tomorrow morning. What time is it to start on that market? Yeah, I know. I mean, I wouldn't have stopped, but I could have been asked, couldn't I? Any problems? Oh, not so far. I know you don't approve, Betty. Look, you've made your point. I just want to know if everything was all right. Well, yeah. I don't know whether Bet thinks so. Hello. It's only me. And it is only me at all. Oh, one of them sort of nights, was it? Yes. And why don't you join me in a nice little night, Cathy? Because, oddly enough, Alf, I've had enough of drink. Drink I can get. It's just fellas I've got to learn to live without. Hiya. <laughs> well, I won't ask you what's going on in there. I did all I could, love. Did you tell his nibs what I said? Yeah, I did. I got the impression that you were expecting just a little bit earlier. Me? Not by Billy, by Bet. And you were disappointed. Well, I'm sorry about that, but I did tell her I might not be back. Uh. <coughs> Betty? Well, which one of these houses does it read a fair club living? I'm oh, just curious, you know. That new one, look, with the lights on. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Um, anything else you wanted? Uh, yes, there is, as a matter of fact. Female company. How are we fixed? Home. Ever been to Runcorn? Well, no, I can't say that I have. Oh, you haven't lived, Mavis. I'm going there this afternoon, delivering for Baldwin. I'll play my cards right. I could finish early and uh, have the day off, so how are you fixed? <laughs> I don't know what you're suggesting, but whatever it is... It is, Mavis. A run in the country in the van, isn't it? Driver's mate on the Runcorn run. I can see you now, the open road, the wind in your hair. We can stop by the canal bank and have a little picnic. I'll tell you what, you. let's bring your raincoat, though. Look, I've got work to do. I can't I'll just drop that. everything and go Thank waltzing you. off to run. Oh, oh, well, I'll keep a smile on my face and, and an ache in my heart. Bye, Fred. Bye. Did I hear you turn down an invitation? Well, I don't know if he was serious. But whether he was or not, it wouldn't go anywhere with him. Quite right. That was Tony Cunliffe on phone. Betty Turpin, policeman lodger. Well, what did you want? The pleasure of my company this evening. That's the second time he's asked me. And what did you say? Same as you said to Fred G. Well, as far as I can make out, he's Bet Lynch's property. No, you want to tell Tony he's working too hard. Oh, that's a policeman's life, isn't it? They can't just please themselves, you know. Oh, hey, look. A state of it! Oh, it wasn't like this at closing time. This is his after time mob. Oh. Morning. <coughs> a bit late, aren't you? Our acres late. You've only got an hour to get this place ship shape before we open. We have? Yeah, well, Hilda's still off, isn't she? So come on. We must be daft. <laughs> well, let's get sane for once. Look, Billy, we don't get paid for cleaning this place. It's an emergency, isn't it? We've all got a turn to. You can't expect Hilda to come in here the way Stan is now. We don't expect Hilda to do it. You said you'd get somebody else in, temporary. <laughs> I'm not made of money. Listen, you're making enough out of them folks to make it all the mess. <clears throat> While you're stood there moaning, you could get on with cleaning this place, couldn't you? 
I'll go and put the kettle on and make us a nice cup of tea, eh? Yeah, you go and put the kettle on and come back with a mop in your hand. Eh? It's an emergency, Billy. I mean, we don't mind mucking in, look, as long as you do your fair share. And anyway, it's your midnight mates who've made most of this mess. Only fair you should clean up after them. Come on, Randy. It's good for you. You're a faddy lad. It's just as good as lettuce, is this? Hello? Hello? Elaine, where are you? Oh, I've got your postcard, yes. Very interested being in Casablanca, yes. Uh, Winston was there, you know, during the war. Still, you don't remember that, would you? Oh, all right, all right, I'll listen. Today? Oh, good, yes. Well, I'll be looking out for you. Now, you know how to find me, do you? Right. Right. Yes, all right. We're having company around this, so think on, best behaviour. Now, we don't want to be showing ourselves up, do we? Dragging our dinner out floor. And uh, I'll have some cream crackers <clears throat> and a tin of baked beans. I don't have the large size now, Al. Oh, no, sorry. I bet your life's hectic these days, isn't it? <laughs> hectic? How do you mean? Oh, your lodger's got a new boyfriend, do not she? Oh, you mean the policeman? I suppose she brings him home at all hours. I bet you're forever falling over his helmet, aren't Landed? Yeah, well, I didn't think it was going to be like that, to be honest. But, in fact, I don't think he's been round more than the once. You know what Bet's like, though. She uh, reckons it's the big romance. As far as I can see, though, it's all come to note. Is that it, then? That's it. You can reckon me up. Yeah, uh, £3.34, then, please, love. Yeah. Hello. Oh. Hello, Mulder. How's Stan today? Well, he seemed a bit brighter when I saw him last night. Oh, good. Well, give him my best, won't you? Yes, I will. I'll be going in again this afternoon. Right. Ta-ra, love. Ta Will you give Stan that from me? Oh, Ta. Ta very much, Al. Yeah, well, it'll cheer him up a bit, won't it? Yeah. He wouldn't thank you for a bunch of grapes, would he? <laughs> right. Uh, same again, Betty, look, oh, please. Okay. Uh, here, wouldn't you? I might as well, I. Right. Teddy? Oh, no, sir. I'm running Mrs. Ogden to the hospital in a few minutes. Oh. Yeah, I bet you missed that in here, don't you? It must be worth a battle of ale a week to this pub. <laughs> sure, Teddy. Not if I'm driving. Anyway, best be off. See if Mrs. Ogden's uh, ready for going out. Okay, right. yeah. Dark. I'll tell you what, Jack, he's got more sense than you when it comes to drinking and driving. He must get his brains off his man. You what, Vera? She's dead from the neck up. Yeah. They do say that you can tell if a woman's got brains by looking at the man she marries. <coughs> Thank you. I think you've been shot down, Jack, lad. Put another scotch in there, will you, darling? How's your old love life, then? You still doing a term with that PC plod? If you mean Tony, he's a sergeant. Well, they still wear the big same old boots, don't they? Hey, are you still going out with him? Chance would be a fine thing. I'm stuck behind this bar six nights a week and he's working most of the time when I'm not. Oh, he's no good to you, this boyfriend of yours. You want some work, shall I lay about? Oh, no thanks. I've had plenty right, then. Right, Excuse me, please. Nice. Still coping, are we? Well, more or less. Hey! They never came from Newton and Ridley's. You're right, they didn't. Why should they get all the profit? Look, if Newton and Ridley's catch you buying from that cash and carry, they'll be very nasty. You must be careful, lovey. Give over, Betty. Ever since you've had that copper living with you, you've become a right old Joe now. Is it all? It's my sister's girl, you see. Uh, I'm the only family she's got left nowadays. She's been sailing around the world for five or six years now. Your lad's on the boat, Cindy Ken. That's right. I didn't know you had a grown-up son, Kenneth. Yes, yeah, in the Merchant Navy. Doing well, too. Oh, well, my niece isn't exactly in the Navy. Hey, she'd have some fun if she was. <laughs> <laughs> no, on these big liners, they're more like civilians like. She's a trained hairdresser. You'd be amazed at the famous people she's had through her hands. Film stars a lot. Oh, she don't call Jack. <laughs> she's a hairdresser, not a French polisher. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey, no, listen, I've got time to stand here talking. Give me a bottle of sherry. Foreign. Yeah, Percy, I always thought you were the sort who'd make a point of buying British. Well, in general and on principle, yes, but not the sherry. No, if it's only me drinking it, Kenneth, then it would definitely be all more Empire produce. Because there's nobody more patriotic than me. But it's a lady, you see. Oh, she could always drink it fast and think of England. That's what your true patriot would <laughs> ah, do. Ah, well, she picked up some very funny ideas in foreign parts. I can't force my principles on her, can I? Tell her. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, we shouldn't tease him, I suppose. Oh, we should have. We stopped to think we didn't like him. <laughs>
Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, you said you'd sorted these Christmas cards out. They're all mixed up. I did sort them out. They were all in order last night. But you know who it is, don't you? It's them girls from the Comprehensive. In other words, put it down to the younger generation. Like this one here. Mavis and I have just agreed it's all your fault. What is? Whatever's wrong, it's all down to you and your age group. You must have been listening to me, Dad. Here, I've brought them pies you ordered. One meat, one meat potato. Great. How much, much do we owe you, love? It's all right, the paid for. That's right. Well, back to feeding trough. Ta-ra. ta, -ra. ta, -ra. ta -ra. Hey, I'm ready for me pie and all. Mm. Which is meat and potato? Well, it's that one, but you said meat. No, I asked for meat and potato. No. No, before I went next door to order them, I said I'm having meat and potato, and you said meat. And potato. You give up wrong order. I always have meat and potato. Because you have vegetarian leanings, I know. And I usually have meat because I'm more carnivorous than you. But today, I definitely said I'm potato. Can I make a suggestion? Oh, I didn't see you come in. Whichever one of those pies you have, you're going to be starving hungry by tonight. So why not come out for a meal with me? We've been through all this on telephone. That was hours ago. Plenty of time for a lady to change her mind now. You, don't you think the boss deserves a good night out? <laughs> it's not up to me to say. I come round specially to say if you'd had second thoughts. Walk right past the door of the flying horse. That's how serious I am. You're persistent, I'll say that. Me only virtue. What do you say? Yes, all right. You're on. <laughs> the fella at number seven, Nightingale Terrace, gets his paper. I know all about that awkward letterbox, but cram it in somehow. Right. Tra. Tra. Right, well, I think I'll leave you to it, then. You're going home now, Rita? Well, there won't be much happening. You can cope, can't oh, you? Yes, I can cope. <laughs> I'll have to, won't I? Well, I want to have a bath and take me time getting ready for going out tonight. Actually, I was surprised that you agreed to go out with him. I mean, well, especially when you said that he was Bette Lynch's boyfriend. Yes, well, it seems I wasn't quite right about that. I made a few discreet inquiries. Oh, oh, I see. So you were hoping he'd ask you to go out again. I don't know. Yeah, perhaps I was. Well, you see, this is like a first time for me, this going out tonight. And I was thinking that this afternoon, but well, I didn't like to say anything. I mean, it is the first time that you've been out with anybody since... Well, since... Len died. Well, I didn't want to say anything to upset you. I know, you didn't. Oh, Rita, I don't think there's anybody around here who would blame you for wanting to go out and enjoy yourself. Oh, tell me what they think. I mean, as a matter of fact, I don't expect to enjoy myself, but I do think I ought to make the effort. I mean, just lately I've been finding myself getting, well, not peculiar exactly, but wanting to draw the house around me like an old coat, you know? Wanting everything just so, getting a bit too fond of a boiled egg on a tray in front of telly. I mean, I don't want to end up like some women do, all turned in on themselves and scared of losing their cosy little solo routines. I hope you're not hinting that I'm like that, Rita. Now, you said that, not me. Right, I'll go and get my coat. Apart from that, I quite like the fella. Go on in, love. It is nice to see you. It's nice to see you. Let's have a look at you. Oh, you're getting bonnier. Oh, yeah, it must be that. See, yeah. Still, you get your good looks from our side of family, not your dad's. A very nice chap and no disrespect intended, but he was no hope ended, was he? You're looking very well. Well, why shouldn't I do? I mean, I look after myself, don't I? Everything in moderation, that's the secret. <laughs> I had a commanding officer in the army. He used to say something. You're a fanatical moderate, that's what you are. He told the world to me. I like your new place. It's much nicer than the old flat. Oh, it's not bad, is it? It goes with the job, of course. Uh, how long is it since you were up here, Oh, then? you've got a butchie. What's his name? Randy. Your auntie Elaine's come to see you. Can he talk? Can he talk? He's a marvel. He said, God save the Queen. Go on, say God save the Queen, Randy. Well, he's not used to you yet, but when he is, he can't do enough for you. You won't be stopping, won't you? I haven't come all this way just to spend five minutes with you. Good, because I've got something in the oven. Take a good deep smell. What should I be smelling? Steak and kidney pie. You used to love it when you were a little girl, didn't you? <laughs> I hey? still do. Now, so I want to know what all your plans are, where you're going, who, with and why. I haven't got any definite plans, to tell the truth. My next cruise is the Christmas cruise, so I don't have to be back on board for nearly a month. Anyway, I'd like to spend the night, if that's all right with you. 
All right, it's marvellous. I mean, you could be double. We'll launch your follow, won't we, Randy? I, I just wondered if you were thinking of coming over this weekend. Oh, yeah, yes, I know you did, but... Oh, of course he was. He's always pleased to see you. No, well, he's much the same, really. The nurses are very good with him. Oh, no. No, there's nothing like that to worry about. I'd let you know if there was. Oh. Oh, no, well, if it's awkward, Trevor, you mustn't think of it. Your work comes first. Yes, I I'll keep you in touch. I'd better ring off now because I'm using Mrs Fairclough's phone. Y you take care and all. Yes. Bye, love. I, um, I, I don't know how much the call will be, do you? Oh, give over, Hilda. I don't want any money. Oh, that's very good of you. You know, I, I wish our travel lived a bit nearer. Well, you do when somebody's poorly, don't you? Yeah. Of course, he did come and see Stan last weekend, but it, it's very difficult for him with his work and everything. How is Stan, Hilda? Well, very cheerful, considering. Do they say when he'll be home? No. No, well, they don't, do they? They never tell you very much, really. Seems strange in the house without him, though. Yeah. It's a funny feeling. Mm. Yes, well, I'll, uh, I'll get off to the hospital again now, because he likes to see me. He's always looking out for me when I come in the ward. <laughs> You're off out somewhere, too, by the look, have you? <laughs> yes. Somewhere a bit more cheerful in the hospital, I bet. I should expect so, Hilda. Yes, well, I'll say to her, I'll then, and thanks again. Enjoy yourself. <sighs> right, then. I'm away. Suppose you're going birding? Yeah, you could say that. No, too much birding, you know, ruins your health. <laughs> How can you stand there, sucking and smoking, a walking government health warning, and tell me? I am telling you as a father. Too much birding. It's my duty to tell you these things. Oh, yeah? Well, I mean, whether you're taking your notice is entirely up to you, but before you go, I will say just one thing. What's that, then? Get a drink in. Bet. Get me down a pint, will you? Do you know, it must be a wonderful feeling when you get to be an old man and your big son treats you. Yeah, just less of the old man bit. I'm in the prime of life, me. Correction, approaching me prime, I think it's due about 12 o'clock. Now, if you play your cards right, you can just about reach the benefit. Thanks all the same, Jack, but I'm hunting bigger game at the moment. Oh, I know what you mean. Evening all. How a woman can knock about with a copper, I'll never know. It's against nature, you know. Well, why don't you explain this to Tony yourself? He'll probably be popping in later on. Is this your boyfriend in blue you're talking about? Yes. Well, listen, I don't want him around here at closing, so if he comes in, you knock off ten minutes early and take him somewhere else, all right? <laughs> you know what that means? He's got another one of his after-time sessions planned. Well, there's no wrong with that. I like a little bit of after-time drink of himself. Of course you do, lover. You like it before, during, after and instead of you, don't you? <laughs> Change of plan, by the way, Billy lad. How about going to the bar? Oh, that's great. I haven't been for ages. Have we got time for a drink? What we got? Oh, right, yeah. Oh. Be a little late, but... Uh, We'll miss the first race, not to worry. It'd make Greyhound racing all right for you two girls. Oh, so long as I back a winner. <laughs> you stick with me, darling, I'll show you how it's done. Well, I hope you've better look on dogs than you have on roulette, Billy. Oh, down a bit where you were last night. Uh, just a little bit, yeah. Hundred pounds, you told me. <laughs> some days you win, some you lose. Hey, Bert, Betty, you'll be looking after things here tonight. I'll be back about tennis, all right? Your boss is going to the dogs, love. Yeah, with notice. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. It's quite a nice place, this. One of your regular haunts. No, I've only been in once or twice. I usually drink down at the Flying Horse. It's handy for the station. Do you know, I'd almost given up hope of getting you to come out with me. In fact, if you hadn't done tonight, I think I might have done. Well, I wasn't playing hard to get or anything. Just didn't want to tread on Bert Lynch's toes. No, oh, like I told you, there's nothing special between Bet and me. I just take her out once or twice. I like the girl, mind you. So do I. In my game, you get to meet a lot of people like Bet. But you're bound to hang around the pubs. Instead of being home doing the washing up with a wife and putting up shelves, you're leaning on some bar talking to a barmaid. Well, at least you're honest enough to admit it. Yeah. I met a few barmaids in my time. 
Never met anybody quite like you, though. There's no special about me. You underestimate yourself. It's like you've been stood up again, darling. Mm. Sorry. You've been watching that door all the time I've been standing in. Okay, lads. Last orders. He's no good for you, this fellow of yours. Well, it's not his fault. It's his job. Well, there's only one thing to do if you want to see more of him. So get yourself arrested. See ya. Good night. Mike. Oh, you crawl. <laughs> hey, Jack. Who's that lass with Percy over there? Oh, it can't be a girlfriend. He could pull one of them, could he? <laughs> he may be pulled her on one of his midnight jaunts, then. I bet he's got gone for peeping from way back, and I bet that's his probation officer. <laughs> <laughs> she can bind me over any time, huh? You've definitely got a kinky streak, you, Fred. <laughs> I bet when you go ashore on this Greek island, you, you never see a steak and kidney pie. No. Mind you, we eat all right, really. You've always been a smashing cook, though, haven't you? Especially your pastry. Ah, uh, well, cold hands, that's a secret. You know, you've either got cold hands or you haven't. You're born with them or you're not. Like another drink? No, I think what I'd really like to do is to get to bed. I've gone tired all of a sudden. Oh, it's a bit journey, that. Right, come on. He'll probably surprise us when we get in. Who? Randy. He comes out with you when you're not expecting. Oh. As clear as a bell. Oh. Hello. Hello. Oh. Can we have your glasses, lads, now, please? Oh. Hey, look here. Closing time, and he comes waltzing in with his boozing pals. Right, girls. What are you having? Is this winnings you're spending? Could be. I thought you were down on the night. Well, broke about even or thereabouts. Yeah, I've never yet met a punter who admitted losing. It amazes me how the bookies ever make a living. <laughs> <laughs> Everything okay, girls? Oh, yes. Things are wonderful. <laughs> You're having me on. Oh, I swear to God, two donkeys stolen in the past ten days. Donkey rustling in Weatherfield. <laughs> we got one of them back, but there's two blokes oh. claiming it. We'll have an identification parade by the end of the week. <laughs> Make yourself comfortable. They're good little houses, these, aren't they, when they're done up? Was it like it when you got it? No, my husband built it. He was a builder and plumber. Oh, that's handy. Hello. Yeah. That's a silly question, of course it is. Do you know all the photos I've got of my ex-wife and wedding pictures and so on? I don't look at them, they upset me. Do they? Oh, I wouldn't be without my photos. Yeah, well, you had a happy marriage, haven't you? Yes. Would you like a drink? Love a cup of coffee. Right. It'll be instant. Fine. Right, lads, I'm away to my bed. Hey, are you, are you not stopping? It could be all right for a bit of after time after he's got rid of a few of these dead ends. No, Jack, I've had all I want. I'll see you anyway. Good night, darling. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Any lads Can got no else to go to? Are we uh, all right for a bit of the old... Uh, have you got any money? Oh, no danger. Come on, love Why are you supping? You're welcome. Oh, uh, four pints there. Aye, and four scotches to go with them. Hang on a minute. <laughs> but you girls can have a drink with me before you go. No, thank you. I've got to go and get my bus, Billy. Hey, come on, Billy boy. Splice the flaming main brace. These poor girls are crying out for a drop of Mother's Ruin. All right, with you in a minute. Right, see you tomorrow, then, girls, all right? Be careful, Billy. You could get done, you know. Betty, don't worry. Stop fretting. Right. Right. <laughs> what are we having then? Yeah, well, I mean, he won't be told. I mean, Tony's as good as warned him. He'll be done, you know, if he goes on. Where the hell was Tony, anyway? Oh, he's probably working. Come on. Cheer up. You'll feel better after a night's sleep, lovey. Aye. Yeah. I better go, you know, so I'll miss me brush. <laughs> no, no, no. See ya. Ta ta. Well, I can take a hint. As soon as I saw that yawn, I got the message. <laughs> no, I've enjoyed myself tonight. Really have. Can't help being tired. I mean, it's just getting up at the crack of dawn to uh, do the papers for delivery, lads. Yeah, I know. You really enjoyed yourself? Very much. So, well, then, let's do it again sometime. Soon. I'd like that. Well, I'll say good night, then. visiting time, Taryn. Thank you. Well, she says he had a comfortable night and he's as well as can be expected. Oh, well then. She didn't sound too worried, but you don't like to ask too much, do you, when you know how busy they are? 
Still, if he's comfortable, perhaps that means he's settling down then, eh? Because mm. you remember that woman ran the laundrette in Rosamond Street? Well, her husband were took like that and rushed off to the hospital. Mm. Oh, she practically got a priest in for the last ride, you know, with them being our seas mm. like. Then a week later, he was home again. Of course, he has to take things a bit easy, but, well, otherwise, you wouldn't know there'd been a thing wrong with him. Mm. And, you know, I'd best get on with my work. Any post? There's a couple of bills and a rude postcard. I put them oh. near the till where I usually put them. Uh, Ta. Oh, Wildy, how's your stand then? Oh, well, he had a comfortable night. I just phoned up. Uh, Betty said I could. I'll give you the money. Oh, give over. I tell you what, I'll settle for you making me a cup of tea. How's that then? I'll do you a bit of toast and all, shall I? No, no, just a cup of tea and about two dozen aspirins. Another late night, was it? <laughs> Betty, my love, I am over 21. I'm allowed out after 10 o'clock. Past two o'clock by the look of you. Suppose that gang stopped again? Well, I'm not into solitary drinking yet. Yeah, Bernie and the girl stayed on for a bit. We had a bit of a laugh, you know how it is. I know how it'll be if you keep it up, lovey. You're going to lose your licence. None of us will be laughing then. I mean, you've already had one warning. Now, it's when there's a lot of them together that it frightens me. You know, a whole bunch of them, all in that leather with studs and chains just hanging about on a street corner. There's nothing terribly sinister about black leather gear, Maeve. I wear it myself sometimes. You're not scared of me, are you? Well, no, of course not. But, I mean, it's not just the punks and the skinheads, though they look the most sinister. It, well, it, it's almost any group of young people nowadays. I mean, you walk past them and you think, <gasps> Ooh, are they going to attack me? And you don't want to think like that because, well, you know that most of them are just ordinary young people and they're hanging about like that because they can't get a job and they've got nothing better to do. But you end up feeling frightened of all of them. Now, it shouldn't be like that, Terry, so why is it? I don't know, Maeve. Perhaps they should try and understand the kids a bit better. Oh, well, why shouldn't they try and understand us for a change? Why is it always the older generation that has to make all the allowances? I mean, young people aren't the only ones with problems, you know. Oh, did you think I got lost? You wouldn't credit. Town's that busy already. They'll be doing the Christmas shopping in June. Uh, is it all right if we get down from the dock now, please? Eh? Your mate here, she's just sent me on trial for all the crimes of the younger generation. I wouldn't mind but only come in for a packet of chewing gum. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> I was just trying to make a sincere attempt to find out why the young people behave as they do. I was trying to get a dialogue going. Did you? I don't think we even speak the same language. Listen, the day you speak the same language as him, love, is the day I start looking for a new assistant. Hey, tell me what you think about this. I think you're supposed to, uh, get a bigger size. I think you're supposed to wear it loose. What do you think? Try it on. Oh, later. Tell the truth. I'm jiggered. What, with a late night last night and training around town this morning? How did you get on? Odd at first. I mean, all these years I've been Len's wife. It was always me and Len. Then I was Len's widow. Still am. Yes. But you're still Rita as well, aren't you? I mean, well, it's time you started living your own life again. I know, but you get used to seeing yourself one way. Tell the truth, I thought all that side of thing had finished as far as I was concerned. Well, he obviously didn't see it like that, did he? He saw an attractive, unattached woman. I must say, for the first man to go out with since Len died, it was a lucky choice. Mm, so you liked him then? It was easy to get on with. Pleasant evening and no hassle at the end of it. Well, shall you be seeing him again? I dare say, he lives in Maybrook. Oh, I mean to go out with. Well, I don't know whether he'll ask me again. And if he does, I don't know whether I will. Why not? Because of that? No! Wouldn't have gone out with him in the first place if I thought I was spoiling out for her. Give me credit. But apparently there never was much between them. Just bet, letting her imagination run away with her. Right, I'll take these through and put kettle on. And uh, have one yourself, Lovie. Thanks, you're a gent. Speaking of which, what shifts this elusive lodger of yours on this week? Well, he's on duty now, as a matter of fact. Bad Chuck. Why, Chuck? Mm. Because, Chuck, I'm beginning to think, Chuck, that I've grown two heads this summer. Either that or there's another reason he's avoiding me. He's not avoiding you. You know he's not keen on pubs. So he could meet me somewhere else. I'm not a permanent fixture here. Bus station, ice rink, fish market. I'm not right fussy. Look, I'm sure he'll get in touch with you when he's ready. I mean, he's had a very bad time, love. So what do you think I'm going to do to him, Betty? Pull all his teeth out? Look, I know he's had a bad time. That's one of the reasons I want to see him, to help him get over it. Heaven help me, Betty. I'm potty about the bloke. Hey, you needn't be coiling. She's talking to my face. 
She's got a secret passion, me as Lynch, you know. <laughs> That's why she's always um, failing in rude to you, isn't it, <laughs> You're dead right there. She's terrified in case she blurts out her undying look for me cuddly body. Is that right, Lynchy? Yeah, yeah, you're right, Fred. <laughs> Are you sure he's not said anything to you? <coughs> well, such as what? Oh, yes, Lord. Uh, pie and a lager, please, Betty. Oh, thank you. Dining okay. on your own today, then? Yeah, dead and busy. Well, what about that leggy secretary of yours? We haven't seen the hair in there lately, have we? Uh, Sally's lunching with a boyfriend, as it happens. Anything else? Oh, sexy Sally's got herself a boyfriend, has she? Well, someone new on the scene? Hardly. Someone she's known from college. Oh, someone her own age. Well, that'll make a change, wouldn't it? Can I get you a drink? No, thanks. Just go oh, on. All right. Uh, Bill? No, Tess. Save it for later. Our Debbie's day off today. She's making me dinner. I'll uh -huh. just suck this and shoot off. Hey, hey. He's dead evil, isn't he? He said that deliberately, you know, to upset Billy. He knows that he's not over that Sally yet. And why else do you think he's running around frantic and supping all hours? I'll tell you something. He was very, very hurt when she turned him down. I think I know the feeling. Can I introduce you to my niece, Councillor? Elaine, this is my good friend, Councillor Roberts. Pleased to meet you, Councillor Roberts. Likewise, and it's Alf. Your uncle's very formal. Come from around here, do you? Well, I used to, but you know. You've got to have butter quick. I've got things to run out of. My dad won't look at mashed potatoes unless they're dripping in butter. Just a minute, miss. There's other folk here in front of you, you know. It's all right. We're only socialising. Sorry, love. Did you say you were from around here? I used to be. I've been travelling for the last five years. Yes. It's been all over the world, she has. There's nowhere she hasn't been. Yeah, what do you do? Where, hostess? No, I work on board a ship. Hairdress on the big posh ocean liner, you know. She's done the hair of all the famous stars, society ladies. You wouldn't believe it, you know, it's millionaires' wives that give the smallest tips. Uncle Percy. Well, it's true. Only she's staying with me for a bit, you see, because the, the ship's in dock for refurbishment. Well, if you're an hairdresser, I don't suppose you could do it with this frizzy mop, could you? Only when I've got a date tonight, and it's looking more like flipping wild than usual. <laughs> no, she couldn't. She's on holiday, apart from out else. I don't mind, Uncle. I've nothing else to do. He's spoiling me rotten. He won't so much as let me pick up a duster or boil an egg. He's enjoying every minute of it. <laughs> One packet of butter. Oh, thanks. So, what time then? I'm not looking at all today. About three o'clock. Is that all right? Great. Oh, I'm Debbie, by the way. See you later then, Debbie. <coughs> Hello there. Twenty fags out, please. Who's a sly old devil then? Living here, around here, all that time, and never letting us know you've got tucked away a bevy of beautiful birds. This young lady is staying with Mr. Sugden. So much the better. She happens to be my niece. That's what they all say. Put them on now, Avera's list, will you? You'll have to bring your uh, niece around to Rovers later. Unless, of course, you've got other arrangements for the evening. You can't say as I blame you. He's disgusting, that man. No, nah, he's a local character. You want to take no notice, love. Listen, after five years at sea, it takes more than a joker like that to bother me. Right, there you are. Two freshly done roast beef sandwiches. Mm. Freshly done? When? Straight after the First World War? Hey, hey! Nothing wrong with that. I know, meat, remember. It's my job. Oh, I know cooking. Remember, that's my job. Come on, you cheeky young devil. It's all this resistible charge from me, dad him. Betty, I'm just going in back to make a phone call. I won't be a tick. Oh, who are you going to phone? Well, guess. We said he'd be at the station. If he's working now, he'll be free tonight. I'm going to invite him round for a bit of supper. No, I wouldn't do that if I were you. No, why wouldn't you? Well, because... Well, I, I was hoping that I wasn't going to have to tell you, love, but, you know, because I didn't want you to be upset, but... Well, he took somebody else out last night, love it. Tony's been seeing another woman, and you've listened to me going on and on, and you've never said a word? Well, just last night, you know, just for the first time. And so, you see, well, it'd be wrong for you to phone him, love it. I mean, you know, you could be very hurt. What do you mean, I could? <laughs> Betty. It doesn't do to jump to conclusions. Mm. So he took somebody else out. Big deal. Like he said, it was just the once. <coughs> and I mean, he didn't know I was working. Did he ask if I was? Well, he, he might have mentioned there it. There you are. <laughs> oh, dear gods, I'm not as fit as I thought I was. It's all them late nights doing that. It's not being 21 no more has a lot to do with it. Right, come on. Look, and if I told you, if you keep dealing with that cash and carry, you're going to be in dead trouble with the brewery. Uh, they'll know nothing, Betty. I know what I'm doing. Trust me. He knows what he's doing. Like a bloke that jumps out of an aeroplane without a flipping parachute. I don't know what's got into him. 
It's like them lemons that rush over the cliff. Hey, it'd probably be just somebody that he works with. And she'd ask him. Thought she were doing him a favour, because he don't know that many folk round here. And knowing Tony, you know, he'd not like to hurt her feelings, don't you think? Bet. Look, it wasn't a girl from the station. It took Rita out. Rita? Yeah. You mean our Rita? I don't believe it. How could she? Well, how could she do that to me? She knows how I feel about him. Flaming hell, Betty, I thought Rita were my mate. No, they've got this um, cordon bleu cookery course at the Polytechnic. I quite fancy that. Mm. But then I think, well, who do I know that I could practice that sort of food on? I mean, half the pleasure of cooking is doing it for somebody. Well, you could have had somebody. You could have had two somebody. Oh, Rita, you don't get married just to practice your ver flambe a la creme. That oh. sounds very profound. Oh. You talk about kung fu, or is it a job for the vice squad? Hi. Hello. I've gone make some tea. How are you today? Fine. Hope oh, I didn't keep you up too late. I got the distinct impression you're used to an earlier bedtime. Well, you make me sound right dreary. I used to be a right dirty stop out, you know. Think nothing at rolling home at one and two o'clock in the morning. When you were singing. How do you know about that? You told me last night. You told me a lot of things. Flipping, eh? That'll teach me to go out with a copper. <laughs> I told you a lot of things about me, too. Yes, you did. Oh, I don't usually. Don't know what got into me. Well, that's me, Gobby. I never know when to be quiet. Well, I'm not complaining. As a matter of fact, it's the best night I've had in a long while, a very long while. Well, say something. Like what? Like it was the same for you. Well, felt comfortable with you from the first time I met you. You know, that's about the most romantic thing a fella's ever said to me. You make me sound like an old sock. I can say romantic things too, you know. I don't suppose you're ready for that yet, are you? No, I'm not. No. I hope you don't think I'm being presumptuous after a first date, but, well, don't you think we can help each other? Well, I'd like to think we could be friends. Friends? That's good for a start. It's all about Friday. What about Friday? Friday night. Can I see you? There are still a few questions I want to ask you, Mrs. Well, Fairclough. I don't know whether I can. You don't know whether you can, or you don't know whether you want to. Oh, that's not easy. Thank you. Friday will be fine. You must miss her a lot. I do. Oh, my dad's grand, really. Except when he's been a monster. It's not the same. Well, you can't ask him to go shopping for clothes with you. Pin up the hem of a frock. Ask how far to let a boy go. I could ask my mum anything. More like a sister, really. She died when I was 18. And then your dad. That's why I went to sea, really. As soon as I was old enough. No one to stop home for. Apart from Uncle Percy, of course. <laughs> He's a love. It must be a grand life, though, going to all them exciting places, meeting all them stinking rich fellas. Like everything else, it has its disadvantages. Bet not as many as working in a grotty cafe serving randy lorry drivers all day. You don't have to do it for a lifetime. Well, I'm not going to, but it's a start. Actually, I mostly quite enjoy it. <laughs> I have to. I fought my dad tooth and nail to do it. He wanted me to stop on at school. Have you got a boyfriend? Or do you think I'm dead cheeky? No, I haven't. And yes, I do. I don't mind, though. I was pretty much the same at your age. Straight out with it. Alan used to say I still do. I never know when to keep my mouth shut. Alan? The bloke I used to live with. There, madam. What do you think? Hey, you good timing. I've just come in. I saw the car. Do you want a cup of tea? I'm just putting kettle on. Hey. Will you have a look at that jumper in there? I got it this morning and I can't decide whether to keep it or not. What the hell do you think you're playing at, Rita, eh? What? Tony. Tony Cunliffe. What do you think you're doing going out with my bloke? Oh, I see. I suppose you thought I wouldn't get to know. I fully expected you'd get to know. I'd have told you myself if you weren't to brought it up. <laughs> I'll bet. Do you think I'd have gone out with him if it had to be a secret? Do you think I'd have done it behind your back? So flaunting it in front of my face makes it better, does it? I'm neither flaunting it nor hiding it. Oh, Bet, what's happening? I don't want to fall out with you. That's the last thing I want. Tony asked me out. I went. That's all. That's all? Knowing he was my bloke? Knowing how I feel about him? Well, some friend you are. 
bet, love. He's not your bloke. He's not anybody's bloke. He's a free agent. Okay, he took you out a couple of times. Truthfully, isn't that all that there was to it? No, it flipping isn't. That's not what he says. You mean that's not what you want to believe? Because you want to get your rotten claws into him yourself. Now, that's not true and it's not fair. Of course, you'd stand a much better chance than me, wouldn't you? Nicely set up. Nice little business. That little bank account. A much better proposition than a flaming barmaid. Now you're not being fair to Tony, if that's what you think he is. Oh, I suppose you think you know him better, do you? I don't claim to know him at all. Seems a decent sort. So you believed him when he very conveniently said there was an out between us? Yes, I did. And I asked other people as well, just to make sure. You didn't ask me, though. And I don't need three guesses why. Because you fancied him yourself. And it was a hell of a sight easier to turn a blind eye than to have me on your conscience spoiling things. You've got it all wrong. Have I? It doesn't seem to me there's a lot to get wrong. Bloke comes along, we're doing fine. You stroll into the picture, splat. Bet bites the dust again. I didn't ask for any of this. I don't need it. You think I do? Have you seen him again? Friday. Don't go, Rita. Please. Give us a chance. Kid, I know it's not been easy for you since Len died. I know you must have been lonely. God knows if anybody understands loneliness, I do. But find yourself another fella, eh? Anybody. There's millions out there. You don't have to flame him, I'll take mine. Mr. Baldwin, I'd like to introduce you to my niece, sir. She's just off a cruise liner. Elaine, this is Mr. Baldwin, one of our local captains of industry. How are you, Elaine? Can I get you a drink? First? Oh, thank you very much. I'll have a bitter, please. Thank gin you. and tonic, thanks. Uh, gin and tonic, uh, bitter, and give us another scotch, will you? Okay, love. Well, sounds like you had a nice holiday. No, I wasn't on holiday. I work on board ship. Yes. Yeah, Hairdressing salon. All over the world she's been. Man, she got the freedom to do it, uh, being single, like yourself. I think my uncle's trying a spot of matchmaking. I get the same impression. No such thing. I just thought you two might have something in common, that's all. Don't, uh, don't I get introduced. <laughs> He's not the only eligible bachelor around, you know. <laughs> Elaine, this is Fred G. Hello, he man. works for Mr. Baldwin. You mean she really is your flipping niece? Of course she is. Hey, I hope this hasn't scuppered my chances with you, darling. Mm, not at all. You never had a chance with me. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, where have you been? I told you, out for a bike with my mates. Why, what's the problem? I've been coping on my own, that's the problem. I mean, Ben didn't turn in because you don't feel too grand. Really? Mm. She seemed all right this morning. Anyway, I'm here now. I'll come and give you a lift. Is it going to be another late night session then? It could be, Betty, my love. Could be. Anyway, what the hell? Life's too short. I'm taking messages for her, though. Uh, yeah, of course I can. Just give me five minutes, will you? Is everything... Uh... Yeah. Yes, all right. I'll, I'll ring you back. Uh, yes, I've, I've got the number. She's a nice kid. I liked her. She was dead chuffed with the way you did her hair. She really appreciated it. Right. Yeah, that's all we asked. Can I get you another drink? No, I don't think I'd better. I don't want to keep Uncle Percy waiting up. I know it's after hours, indeed. Well, the landlord's very easy going about that, don't worry about it. I must admit, that's one thing I prefer about working abroad. Well. The drinking hours are more sociable. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I gather you're a local lass. Born and bred. Yeah, well, Percy was telling me you've had a few adventures on your travels and I uh, wonder if you'd care to regale our readers who wanted to. Ken Barlow, Weatherfield Recorder. Well, what do you think? All right. It'll have to be the expurgated version, though, if I'm going into print. Oh, shame, shame. <laughs> well, uh, when are you available, then? So there we are, you see, sitting in this roll, a uniform chauffeur up front, the whole world. Oh, I tell you, look, that tasty in his peak cap, I didn't know whether to sit in the back with Bernie or up front with him. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, anyhow, it cost me a bomb to hire it for the day, but I thought, well, what the hell? You've got to do it in style, right? You're right, absolutely. Right, right yeah. Go on, tell them what happens when we get to our Oh, well, there's us two looking right out of vogue. You know, we have big tippers on and all that. Big what? Hats. 
Oh. Suppose. Oh. oh, cheeky devil. <laughs> if I tell you, Gertrude Schilling didn't have a look in. So this chauffeur, all snooty he was, he gets a picnic hamper out the back, dead posh like, you know, and opens it up. <laughs> and he brings out a week's worth of dirty washing. <laughs> right there in front of all them grey top hats. <laughs> but the, the wife said she put the grub in the wrong basket. When we got back, she swore it was a mistake. <laughs> I was just going to bed. Uh, it's the hospital, love. They'd like you to ring them back. Oh, did they say... Uh, no, no. Uh, I just uh, said I'd get you. Yeah. Right, I I I'll just get my coat. Well, uh, I'll tell Sally Waterman to be in touch. And uh, you don't mind if she takes a couple of photos? Not if she takes me best Fine. Right. Hey, uh, landlord, don't you think you ought to lock up after me or something? Yeah, See you. Hey, that'll be our tell you. You can smell a booze up five miles away. <laughs> Who's the landlord here? Uh, <clears throat> I am me, Walker. We've got reason to believe that you're selling alcohol after hours, Mr. Walker. Ah, uh, no, you got it wrong, officer. These uh, few mates, uh, pals of mine, they're, they're my guests. And that this practice has been going on for some time. Ah, uh, well, we'd best be off, Jill. You know, a long way to get I'm sorry, sir. I must ask you to stay where you are just for a moment. And not to touch your drinks. Uh, look, I'm, uh, I'm sure we can come to some understanding. My, my family's been running this pub for ages. My mother had it before me, Mrs. Walker. Mrs. Annie Walker. She was the mayor of Weatherfield for a while, you know. If you'll just stand aside, sir, while my officers take details of one's name and address. Hello, sister. It's me, Mrs. Ogden. You rang about my husband, Mr. Stanley Ogden. I... Oh. I see. When? I'm sure you have. Yes. Yes, I will. Good night. Thank you for phoning. He's gone off. My stand's gone. I wish they'd build that school this side of Robin Street. I do. My heart's in my mouth sometimes. Don't car drivers have any kids of their own? Maybe they don't have the job of taking them to school. Yeah, well, they'd know if they did. Motorbikes are the worst. They come right up the middle. I could kill them. Did you hear what happened last night? Oh, about the rovers being raided. Yeah, of course I did. Ken was there. you got to laugh, aren't you? No. Well, Stan. Stan? He died last night. Oh, heck. I never realised he went that bad. I don't think anybody did until they got him in. I think he knew he was bad. He knew, and he didn't want to know, if you see what I mean. People leave things too late. <sighs> Poor Elder. You can't imagine it, can you? Elder without Stan. Oh, leave those, Ivy. You'll be late for work. Oh, you won't mind, Elder. And, uh, listen, I'll get a bit of shopping in for you, shall I? Because, well, you've no tin, love, have you? No, I've not had time. Any road, don't bother. I'll have to think. Well, half knows what you have. Won't see, I'll, I'll get him to make a orbit for you, shall I? Yeah, he'll know. Would have been us anniversary next week. Well, it, it still will be, love. And it will be every year. I know. Yeah, you do, don't you? You find it's a comfort in a way, Elder, because you know that everything don't just go, you know. I cry one day every year, love, if I never cry any other time. I've not cried. Oh, you will, love. You will. You will just give yourself a chance. Now, look, is there, is there anything else I can do for you while I'm here? Oh, no. No, thanks, Ivy. You've been very good. Oh, I don't know, love. Oh, uh, well, there is just one thing if you're going in to help. Yes, love. Well, would you ask him if he could call in? Only there's, well, there's things to do, and uh, I'd respect his advice. He won't need asking, will he, Elder?
Hey, I shouldn't have to start by doing all this, you know. Yeah, well, don't start by going on at me either. I'm choked. Yeah, I bet you are. I'm not wild about coming into all this debris either. All right, little love, I'm sorry. I should have cleared it up, I know, but by half past midnight, I was not in the mood. Mm, I heard all about it. Yes, I've got an old from and all. Elliot Ness, the lodger. When did he tell you exactly? Before or after his mates turned up here? Look, it's no, no need for you to go blaming Tony. He warned you, didn't he? I mean, what more could he do? Uh, we've got the biggest crime wave in history, and they spend their time raiding pubs, people having a quiet drink. You know how much they could do me for? Mm. Four hundred quid. Oh, you know the law, do you? Who was it said the law's an ass? Probably some poor fella dying of thirst on a sweltering hot afternoon at half past three. Mm. You know, foreigners, they come over here and they think we adopt our licensing laws. It's not foreigners you've got to answer to, lovey. It's the bench. Yes, well, I'm going to give the bench the benefit of my opinion. It's your license. So, this is what a speakeasy looks like. Yes. And if you go through that door, you'll see what a lab looks like. And they need cleaning, so get your mop. I don't have to clean the labs. Suit yourself. But that's what I'm paying wages for today. Cos Hilda won't be in, will she? No. Of course she won't. Oh, I know why you've come. And you don't have to ask. Of course I will. You will what? Stand up in court for you. My lad, I have known this man for many years, a pillar of society and a wizard at crossword puzzles. He's just been led astray. Yeah, well, that's very kind. And Mavis here will be a character witness for you. I mean, she's dead respectable. You'll be out in a couple of months. Thank you. Just a packet of aspirin, please. And a glass of water? I mean, they do say the water's just as good as aspirin for the hangover. Rita, if you see me walk around hanging my head, it is not a hangover. It is shame. Deep. Terrible shame. Oh, were you there as well? Yes, Mavis, I was as wicked as the rest. I've been all over the world in that ship. This is the only country where you can get done for having a drink at past eleven. It's not, you know. Well, we don't go to Saudi Arabia. And Norway. They're very strict on drinking in Norway. We don't go there either. Let's see why now. We'll be in good company in that court, won't you, with the likes of Fred G and Jack Duckworth, and in the papers. Have I really done something so terrible? It's the law, isn't it? You've got to keep on the right side of it. Now, there's nobody else in this family ever had a police record. You don't get a police record for drinking after hours. If they catch you again, they'll read it out against you, won't they? That you've been done before. Now, what's that if it's not a police record? Oh, well, I'm a criminal, then. You're making very light of it. Someone asked me to stop for a drink, that's all. Ah, that Bill Webster, I suppose. As it happens. You don't want to go keeping company with fellas like him, love. Why not? He's not good enough for you. Now, I can't speak no plainer than that. What's wrong with him? All right, I can speak plainer. He's common. But one blessing, any road. It wasn't a terrible, long, drawn-out do like it can be. No. I mean, it's harder for you, I know. I mean, you haven't got time to get used to things. No, but... Well, I wouldn't have wanted to see him lingering. Do you mind if I give you a bit of advice? Because I've been through it, you know. Oh, I know, yeah. Well, try to think ahead. You know, think as far ahead as you can, as soon as you can. Try and think what you're going to do after the funeral. Plan it along with the funeral. Hmm. Yeah, well, we'll have to get all that arranged. Oh, well, would you like me to go down and see the undertakers for you? Oh, if you would, Alf. Oh, but uh, not them down by the bridge in Rosamond Street. Oh, do you not want them? It was them what buried Bert Tilsley. Well, that was a decent do. Oh, yeah, but... Well, one of the men... You know, the, uh, the men they have. He had a paper in his pocket. Folded up, but I noticed it all the same. I don't want anything like that. Oh, well, I'll go to Parsons and I know them. Um, it's going to cost a bit, you know that. Oh, yes, but there'll be no penny pinching. Mm, well, that bit of a grant you get doesn't go far, you know. Have you got any, um, any policies tucked away? Oh, yes, we've had one since, uh, oh, since the war. I don't suppose it'll be much, though. It was only coppers when it started. And if you only put coppers in, you only get coppers out, don't you? <sighs> well, we'd better have a look at it anyway. Is your son coming round? Your, um... Trevor. Oh, yes. Yes, I rung him up. He's coming now, over. Oh, good. Well, what I'll do is I'll go down to Parsons. With a bit of luck, your Trevor will be here when they come. Yeah. And don't worry. We'll do right by Stan. The money doesn't matter. I'll find that policy. 
Well, I'll get him in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that for Stan? Yeah, for, for a wreath. Yeah, there you are. How much have we got in Kitty, Betty, love? About a couple of quid. Let's stick it in there, shall we? There you are, Emily. That's for me and Betty. Thank you. Well, it's all adding up. Thank you. I hope we had that barrel changed back. We looked a bit dodgy last night. Switched to a new one this morning, love. I'll say we're all a bit dodgy last night. You can say that again. I'll tell you something, though. It's one of the best hangover cures known. Uh, what's that? The boy's in blue. Oh, don't talk to me, mate. Excuse me. The minute they arrive, don't half sober you up. There's something very not convivial about a police raid. You should have thought about that before you invited me niece to one. Oh, come on. Come on, nothing. I'm saying I don't appreciate it. I'm very sorry. If that's the way you treat a lady, you want to forget it. She just stayed behind for a drink. Aye, with you. And she has cause to regret it. Look, Percy, I'm sorry if I've upset you, but what Elaine does is her business, all right? Here, Fred. There's a card in the window of the cabin. It says, uh, cheerful, helpful driver with van, does light removals, distance, no object. <laughs> not you, is it? What do you mean, Mr. Baldwin? Not me, is it? I've just been looking at the petrol you booked recently. Well, I, I, I mean, I've only been doing the runs. I thought for some time that that van was heavy on juice, you know, perhaps, well, perhaps it's the motor that needs seen to, you know. Something needs seen to. Let's hope it's not the driver, eh? Oh, oh my... What's the matter with you? Like, you're just miserable. Send the lot of you. So they should be. Most of them are due up in court. Yeah. <laughs> well, so's he. <laughs> are you getting us one in there, love? No, I'm not. All right, then. I'll celebrate on my own. Give us a fight, boss. And what, you're celebrating? Never you mind. Between me and you, Gaffer, I will not be appearing in court. Why? Are you leaving the country? No need to do. My name won't be appearing. Why not? Because I'm Stan Ogden. I give him Stan's name and address. Great, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, yes, that's a really nice trick, Jack. Look, it's all right. He's got a perfect alibi, isn't he? I mean, he's, he's in the infirmary. You couldn't get a better alibi than that, could you? Oh, you could, love. Like being at Marchery. <laughs> you kidding? Nice work, Jack. Nice work. Still, nobody did him any favours when he was alive, did they? Policeman. Tell him I want the horse over. You know I'm a rotten liar. He'll know. Well, I'm not lying for you. I'll tell him you don't want to speak to him. Come here. Give it to you. Hello, Tony. How are you? Tickets for what? When? Oh, dear. This Friday. Did I say that? Well, I can't have been thinking. Because I've got something on, that's all. Don't have to say what, do I? Oh, come on, Tony. The tickets won't be wasted. You've got hundreds of women. Of course you have. Look, I can't stop. I mean, it, it's bedlam here. The shop's bursting at the seams. All right, Mavis, keep your hair on. I'm coming. Look, I'll have to go, Tony. Ta-ra. And sorry about Friday. Bareface, I don't know how you do it. Mavis, that's why the telephone was invented. The best way ever for extricating yourself. And always remember, they can't see you, so you don't have to blush. But I thought you quite liked him. Well, I do, but quite liking somebody is not exactly cinemascope, is it? Well, then why are you trying to extricate yourself? Reasons, Mavis. Reasons. Well, it was just a spur and a moment thing, you know. It seemed a good idea at the time. Yeah, well, don't go on about it, Yeah, but I feel that bad about it. So you should. Yeah, but what can I do? Well, like Ken said, don't go on about it. You've done it now. How's Hilda going to feel, eh? When the summons arrives. Probably be just as she's getting over it, be a right tonic. Look, like he said, don't go on about it, love. So I'll arrange for Mr. Ogden to be moved to the Chapel of Rest. Now, you don't have to decide all the details of the funeral here and now. I'm sure you want to discuss it with your nearest and dearest. Well, there's not so many. Mm. One thing, if you're thinking of cremation, there's a form that's required from the doctor at the hospital. So if you could let me know as soon oh, no. as you can. No, I think, uh, I think I'd like him to be buried. Oh, is there a family grave? No. Well, a plot would cost rather more than cremation, I mean. I'm sure you'll understand this. Uh, oh, yes, but, well, would that be a plot forever? Seventy-five years. Oh. 
long enough. Yes. Anyway, I'll leave this brochure with you. You'll find everything's detailed in there. Everything you might want and what it costs. So I'll wait to hear from you. Well, I want a grave, definitely. A grave with a stone and his name on. Of course, I see a lot of funerals, burials and cremations, but I always think a grave with a stone... Yes, a well-kept grave can be a very beautiful thing. And a comfort. That's what I want. Oh, don't blame me. I wasn't drinking after hours. Oh, don't rub it in. Look, I just want you to have a word with your boyfriend. And who might that be when he's at home? The copper, Cunliffe. Once and for all, he is not my boyfriend. You don't want to go around saying things like that. You know, you could get yourself in a lot of trouble. Thank you. I am in a lot of trouble. Look, I just want you to put a good word in for us, that's all. It's too late. You were caught. You've had your name taken. Yeah, well, it, it's something else. What? Never mind what. Just ask him, eh? I can't ask him. Ask him yourself. Ask him what? Hey, don't ask me. Oh, very nice. Good to know who your friends are when you need them. What does he want, exactly? Heaven knows. I don't think he's too sure himself. Hiya. Is, uh, is Percy at home? No, he isn't. Did you want him? No. I just wanted to make sure he wasn't at home. Oh, why is that? Because I'm not exactly his top soldier. He's made his feelings clear that I'm the man that led his niece astray. Oh, heck. He is a bit old-fashioned. And he's got no business. I hope you told him. Well, it's pretty clear that he thinks the world of you. And I'm... Well, it's a toss-up between me and Bluebeard. Well, if it makes you feel any better, he had a go at me and all. Any road. I just called to say I'm sorry that things turned out the way they did. Not your fault. No, but it did uh, put a damper on things, kind of, didn't it? <sighs> An understatement. Because what, uh, what Percy doesn't know is that if the bogeyman hadn't have turned up, I might well have led you astray. Would you? Yeah. And I, uh, I haven't given up the idea entirely, either. Oh, glad to hear it. Oh, well, that's... I wish I had a line of chat. You're not doing too badly. Well, I'm not entirely beginning. I'm just a bit out of practice. Look, I know I'm charging in. But I was round the yard and I was thinking about what you were saying. What was I saying? Well, about you waiting to be called back to your ship. And I thought, well, it... It's no good me hanging about screwing my courage up because by the time I do, you might be gone. Takes them a while to scrape all the barnacles off. So I'll be here for a bit. Oh, well, that's nice then, eh? <laughs> <sighs> you must be slow on the uptake, lad. Um, I just called round to uh, apologise to Elaine for what happened. The best apology you can make is by your own absence. And if I'm being direct, I'm not apologising. Look, Percy, I don't want to fall out. Mr. Sugden to you, and we've already fell out. Uh, I'll be in touch. Uh, I'm just going, Mr. Sugden, I'm just going. Ta-da. You don't want to go encouraging fellas like him. Well, I think I already have Uncle Percy. Then you're a fool. Oh, Trevor, I'm glad you could come. Of course I could come, Mum. Uh, mind now. Mind your good suit. Just been trying to get the fire to burn up. I'm sorry I never made it to the hospital, but I've been that tied up. And I didn't know. No, of course you didn't, Chuck. Now, now don't go blaming yourself, because it's past mending. Well, it's all past mending now, isn't it? Between me and me dad. I would have come, though. Well... You're here now. Uh, could you do with a cup of tea? I could do with something. It's a shocking road, that A6. Yeah, well, just let me clean myself up and I'll see to it. Is, uh, is Polly all right? And the kiddies? They're fine. Oh. She sends her condolences. It's a pity Stan never saw more of them. Uh, will I make your bed up? The room's head. Oh, don't trouble yourself, Mum. Oh, it's no trouble. Uh, I've got to get back tonight. Because, uh, well, there's a lot of things I've got to do tomorrow. And like I said, uh, I've got a lot on at the moment. And there's a few things that are a bit, well, you know, um, touch and go. You can't stop, then? Well, I would if I could. Yeah, well, never mind. Interesting, is it, Gail? I'm reading my horoscope for December. 
Does it say anything about entering a strained period of relationship with your newsagent? No, it says I'm entering a period of tranquillity. Lately you've been in an emotional jacuzzi, but from the fifth the waters will be much less turbulent. Time to ask yourself what you really want in life. Oh, you've been in an emotional jacuzzi? I never noticed. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. Oh, hello. Just me paper, Rita, please. Do you know, I bet there's no one Nicky would like to see more than his grand tonight. You mean you want to go out? Well, I'm sick of seeing him slumped in front of the telly. You've got to put a bomb under him oh, these come days. On, all right. Yeah, hello. Hello. Tra. Tra. Now, what's all this about Friday? You had a better offer or what? No, it's just that, uh, well, I don't want to get involved in an emotional jacuzzi. Hmm. Hello. hello. Back of my scars, please, then. Missed all the fun last night, then. Your boys are certainly cleaning this town up. Well done, Lieutenant. Nothing to do with me. Hello. Well, uh, Gonna try telling Billy Walker that. See ya. Tra. Hello. I'm mystified, Rita. What is it? Well, it's Bet, isn't it? What about Bet? Oh, come on. I told you there's night between me and Bet. Don't you think Bet ought to be the first to know? Because you're better in with the coppers than I am. Am I? Yeah. Look, see if you can find out if they intend to prosecute. They don't always. Have a word with what's his name. Why don't you have a word with what's his name? Because I don't often get the chance to have a cosy little chat with him, do I? Well, neither do I. What's up with her? I wouldn't know, Chuck. They'll find out, you know. Oh, nobody tells them. Oh, they'll slaughter you. Look, they've already breathalyzed me, took away my license, took away my flaming livelihood. Oh, well, mm. happen they'll take that into consideration. <laughs> Who's going to tell them, eh? You are. Uh, eh? Look, it's the only way that that summons don't go to Hilda. Well, you'll do it, and you'll take the consequences. They'll savage him. Look, I'm gone, love. I'll apologize to Hilda, sir. Apologize? Oh, aye, but I don't want to upset her before the funeral. I'll just say Listen, something. you'll say not to Hilda. You'll see it all at the cop shop. They've got to drag you there. Yeah, well, I'm just going out and see the widow now. It's good to know she's got one less trial in store for her. Tell. Aye, tell. And I mean that. I should have called Polly while I was out. Where's the nearest phone box? Oh, he'd let you make a call from the Rovers, or Alf at the corner shop. There is a phone box in Rosamond Street, but it's never working. Vandals. I'll find one. You know, I think me dad would like to be cremated. Really? I mean, he wouldn't like to think about you stood around in a cemetery this time of year, catching your death of cold. I've got a good coat. I'll get it. Oh, oh, it's Trevor, isn't it? Uh, only I said I'd pop round and see your mother. But if it's not convenient, though. No, no, come in. It's Mr. Uh, Roberts. Of course it is. Corner shop. Uh, Mr. Parsons came round this afternoon, Al. Thank you. Ah, did you get something sorted out? Well, he's left me to decide things. It's an expensive business, isn't it? I know you shouldn't think about these things, but it is. Yeah, well, you have to think about, don't you? I mean, £30 grant from government won't go far, will it? And there'll be about £70 from the policy. Doesn't go near, does it? Oh, we'll find the money from somewhere. I've got a bit put by. Yes, well, this is one of those times when families stick together, isn't it? Yeah, well, these things always happen at the wrong time, don't they? There's never a right time, is there? Well, I mean, you know, Christmas coming on, presents for the kids and everything, and Damien's school fees. Well, I'm sure your father would have left it a bit if he'd had the choice. Well, I had no idea it was as much as this I didn't. Now, you mustn't go dipping into your pocket, Trevor. I mean, you've got the children to think about. Stan wouldn't want to see them go short of anything at Christmas. I know you would, Chuck, but uh, I wouldn't take it. The money's there. I was saying to me, Mum, about cremation. I think it's the best thing myself. No, I want there to be a grave where I can go. Look, I don't want to bring it down to money, but it's close on £200 just for the plot, Mum. Ah, it is a lot of money. I mean, just for somewhere to go and put flowers. Oh, I'm not just talking about somewhere to visit. I mean a place to go. I want a grave with a stone and his name on and space for another. Then when my time comes, you won't have to decide anything, Trevor. It'll all be cut and dried and paid for, cos that's where I'll go.
we thought we should have taken them to undertakers, you know, like they do sometimes, only... Well, were you not saying? Oh, no. No, I'm glad you brought it here. I think most people will. Oh, it is good of you. Well, they're from girls, you know, lads as well. We all chipped in. <laughs> yeah. He loved flowers, did Stan, you know. You wouldn't have thought it to look at him, but he did. Yeah, well, Kitty. Oh, would you like a cup of tea while you're here? Um, no, we'd better not, love. Uh, you know what Baldwin's like. Oh, go on, you're not mine for once. No, no, of course you won't. N not when you tell him where you've been. Uh, sit yourselves down, it won't take a minute. Is there anything we do for you while we're here, Hilda? No, no, thanks, I can manage. Our Trevor will be here soon. He said he'd come early. She seems to be taking it all right. Yeah? They've just taken a wreath in across the road. Mrs Tilsley and that friend of hers. The loud-mouthed one. Don't worse. Yeah. <coughs> Wonder what it's like after all those years of living with someone, suddenly they're not there anymore. You never get over it, nor have you lived to be under it. You never thought about getting married again, Uncle Percy. Oh, stop being nosy, never mind me. You're more likely to go in for that sort of caper than I am. And think on when you do. You itch yourself to somebody proper. I'm not thinking of marrying anyone at the moment. I'm glad to hear it. Does he go on at you like this? Look, if you must know, we went out for a meal and it was very enjoyable. He's a nice man. He's a joiner. And you're an old snob. What do you want for your breakfast? Plus the fact he's got a couple of kids. I said, what do you want for your breakfast? You want kids of your own, not somebody else's. What do you want for your breakfast? There's plenty more fish in the sea than that Webster. Get it yourself. I just fancy a change. What are them panatellas like? Oh, sell a lot of them. Right, I'll give them a whirl. Give us a couple of packets. <laughs> What's this, the feeding of the 5,000? That's price for older for after the funeral. Well, she's never doing it herself, is she? Don't ask me. Just sent us the order. Not that for a game of soldiers. She can't go cutting sandwiches the day of his funeral. Look, tell her not to bother. I'll lay something on at the Rovers. Oh. Well, thanks very much. Listen, I uh, I don't want to sound mercenary at a time like this, but it was us she gave the order to. All right, I'm now giving you the order, OK? Just give us a buzz when it's ready to pick up. Right. And you can tell her... Hello, hello. Hello, hello Hilda. Uh, I can't stop, cos uh, I'm expecting our Trevor. But uh, would you just put a, a jar of mustard in with me order? Only Hilda. I'm out at the moment, and I know some Hilda. people do like mustard. Hilda, we're hand. not having you bothering with this, not today. Uh, I'll lay something on at the rovers. I'll get the girls to cut the sandwiches, and I'll give everybody a drink, all right? So there's no need for you to bother. Oh, but... This is normal, Hilda. You can give your friends a cup of tea before the... when they arrive, you know, and a cake or something, but afterwards it's best at the rovers. And don't worry about money. I'll see to it. Oh, why is everybody so good to me? Because well, we like Yilda and we like Stan. Everybody likes Stan. Well, thank you, Billy. Funny, isn't it? Nobody sees your good side till you've kicked it. Was it for you yet? <laughs> right, let them all come. It's late. Who's late, love? Tony wants a word with you. Said he'd be in about ten o'clock. You are? Yeah. And me looking like this? Have you not got a brain in your head or what? <laughs> What's with the white tornado? She's in love. Oh, blimey. Them's my sentiments and all. Hello, lovey, come on. She about? Upstairs making a face up. <laughs> How long will that take? Oh, well, I mean, you know better, don't you? Still, she's expecting you. She shouldn't be all that long. You better not be. I'm pushed as it is. Oh. I said to myself, I know that car outside. I can I have a word? Yeah, all right, if it's a quick one. Oh, well, I have two quick ones. Oh, you've two quick ones. Uh, uh, we're not even open yet. Oh, no, sorry. I, di I didn't realise. Yeah, you're not supposed to be in here in the first place. It's all right. Look, whatever it is, make it quick. You're a gentleman. Do you mind better? This is private. Mm. Look, you know the other night when we all got nicked? It's engraved on my heart, yeah. Yeah, well, I give them the wrong name and address. Not very original. Naughty, mind you. You don't know naughty. I told him my name was Stan Ogden. What, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's bad luck. <laughs> he was a mate of mine. I didn't know he was going to snuff it, did I? 
Well, I can't see the magistrate taking much of a notice of you, can I? Not when he hears how the summons was stuffed with a grieving widow's letterbox. Yeah, but it needn't come at that, need it? I mean, not if I confess, like. What do you mean, if you confess, you already have? Yeah, well... Look, I've got to get down to the station. You better come along with me. Yeah. Right. Tell her I'll be back, will you, Betsy? Right, I'll love her. I've got to go. OK, bye-bye, though. Heard him. Yeah, you did. He couldn't wait. He said he'd be back later on, love. <sighs> Story of my life is that. What time do you want to get off, kid? Well, it's had to be at Hilda's for about two o'clock. Ken's taking him into the cemetery in his car. Better you than me, love. I can't abide funerals. Yeah. <clears throat> is it that long? <laughs> yes. Twenty years ago since my mum and dad moved here. Um, end of June, 1964, thereabouts, anyway. Dad paid uh, £565 for this place. <laughs> Those were the days, eh? How's business, anyway? Not bad. How's the rag trade? Well, come see, come see. Yeah, no, make your mind just fall down. No, no, you'll stay away. Stupid complaints after You're right, Chuck. Oh, well, yes, fine, thank you, Fred. Has everybody got a cup of tea? Don't you, Fred. Let them get it themselves. Oh, it is good to have a cup of tea. Do you like a cup of tea? Oh, do you know, I've never seen so many flowers. There's some from Mrs. Walker there, you see. From your dear friend, Anne Walker. And some from Dr. and Mrs. Lowther. Now, I never expected any from them, you know, with them being so busy. I mean, with his doctrine and uh, with their charity work. No. Oh, God makes some beautiful things, doesn't he? I believe in God, you know. And in heaven. Because, I mean, there must be somewhere better than this. Oh, I'm not saying we weren't happy, because we were very happy, but... Well, there must be somewhere better than this. And that's where he's gone. Oh, excuse me. It's all right to have you. What a sad, sad reason for believing in God. It's almost an indictment of him. Oh, she doesn't seem to bear many malice. And it's a comforting thought. Oh. Mm. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Edwin, oh. everybody. Hello. Stan's cousin Hello. from Hello. 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 And his wife, Doris. Doris. Hello. Oh, aren't they lovely? Hey, Thank they you. Are. I think you've time for a cup of tea, love. Won't be a minute. You. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ivy. Beautiful. Afraid it's a bit crowded, you know, but with only being a small room. Oh, it comes to us all, and it's never the right time, is it? You know now to write it, young fellow, my lad, do you? Best way to be, and all. You've got ready? Yes, Mr. Robbins. Yeah, I'll just bring them out. Hilda? Somewhere. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, hey, oh, thank you very much. <clears throat> oh, I'm all thumbs. What about the flowers, Al? Oh, they're seen to them, love. Oh, right. Trevor? Yeah. Oh, you better go and yeah, Are you all right, Doris? Go on, Doris. <coughs> go on, Doris.
I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Shouldn't you be doing some work? Now, what's the point of being self-employed if I can't knock off when I've got something better to do? <laughs> Give us some more as well, please. Yeah, I'm laughing at us behaving like a couple of school kids. <laughs> You're peeking round the door to see if Uncle Percy was in. Well... I think you're frightened of him. Frightened of him? No. I just don't want any aggro. And you must admit, he's a bit of a flaming nuisance. He's only being protective. He's me uncle and me godfather. And me being little orphan Annie, he feels he has to keep a watchful eye on me. He keeps a watchful eye on all of us. That's the way he is. It was fine when I worked in the salon, giving blue rinses to little old ladies. When I told him I was going to see, hit the roof. He must think you're something special. I think he does. He's not the only one. Well, hello, sailor. Come round here. Give us a shout if you want anything. I'm all in the snow. All right, love. Well, what the matter is. I don't. I don't know what you mean. Don't play the innocent with me. It doesn't suit you. Yeah, you, queering the pitch with Rita, putting the boot in. Hands off, he's mine. What do you think you're playing at? Well, if you must know, I thought she was out of line going out with you and... Well, I know it was just a bit of fun and nothing happened. Who says? Who says nothing happened? Well, as a matter of fact, nothing did happen. But if I wanted something to happen, it would have happened. And I'll tell you for why. Because I'm a free agent, she's a free agent, and you're a free agent. You got it? I thought... Yeah, well, you thought a bit too much for your own good, if you ask me. For God's sake, who do you think we are? Romeo and Flaming Juliet. I'm a copy, you're a barmaid. We had a bit of fun, like coppers and barmaids do. Any time, you could have called it quits. And so could I. And that's what I'm doing, calling it quits. So don't get it wrong again. When you're ready, Batlock. Right. O Lord God most holy, O Lord most mighty, O holy and most merciful Saviour, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. Thou knowest, Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayer, but spare us, Lord most holy. O God most mighty, O holy and merciful Saviour, thou most worthy judge eternal, Suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall from thee. For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God of his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear brother here departed, we therefore commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be like unto his glorious body according to the mighty working, whereby he is able to subdue all things to himself. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, from henceforth blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labours. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Wait. Where? Irene. Oh. Get back across the road, will you? Take Vera with you. I won't be a minute. Oh, all right. I won't be a minute, Mr. Baldwin. I've just got my sandwiches. Well, it's very good of you all to take the time to come. It's nice to see some of his Legion friends and all. Hey, what happened to Yatesy and his missus? I don't know. Well, they knew about it, didn't they? Oh, yes, I wrote to him. Something must have happened. <laughs> so much for muckers, eh? You'd have thought he'd have turned up for Oggy. So never mind, love. You've got plenty of good friends around you. How did it go? Oh, flipping marvellous, you know. Comic book great. Where do you yeah, think I've been? Palace of writing. Most of the point is, how did you go at the police station? They're going to do me up after me confessing and all. Do you know you're not a duck with you, are you? You're a duck egg. Vera, come on, Mr. Bond's getting upset. Not half as upset as I am. Excuse me. She was a pint in there, Betty Loft. Still on the house, isn't it? You know, you'd eat this bar top of it, cos you know. Give over. I've spent enough over this counter, I'm telling you. Fred. Yeah. Right, it's right, though, isn't it? It's about time we got something out of young Walker. You called in at the office on the way back from the cemetery. All right, see the not scarving. Good thinking, Mike. Cheers. Yeah. Had this very funny phone call from this fella. Aye. Wanted another consignment of shirts. Asked to talk to Mike Baldwin. Wouldn't believe me when I said it was me. He said he knew Mike Baldwin very well. Great big fellow, he said, with a chubby face, uh, sandy coloured hair, going a bit thin, gold rimmed glasses. Well, um, uh, well no, that, that was a misunderstanding. It, it, it's all sorted now, anyway. It's now. You know, when Duckworth came to me with that check, I thought, this isn't just him. There's a business brain behind this, and I think you've got what it takes. <laughs> well, uh, what, now, don't you my... sell yourself short, Fred. From what this fellow said, you're on the ball. Six months, you could make yourself a bomb. Might even have enough to open your own little factory. Join the ranks of the entrepreneurs. No, Fred, I am. I think you're what this country needs. It'd be unfair for me to stand in your way. So tomorrow morning, first thing you call in at the office, eh? Pick up your cards. Got the picture? Oh, and, uh, good luck. <laughs> no, Tony. I'll not be coming out with you on Friday. I'm sorry. The answer's no. But why, for Pete's sake? I told her straight down the line, crystal clear, just like my conscience. It's only a date. A few drinks by tea. Exactly. Not worth losing a friend over. Sorry. If I live to be a hundred, I... I'm not finished with you, lady. How did she know? Oh, Billy Walker let me ring up from the Rovers. It was very good of him, cos it must cost an awful lot to Canada. Our Irma should have been here, Mum. She's his daughter when all's said and done. Oh, now, she's starting a new life for herself, love. Oh, you mustn't be too hard on her. She's had a rotten time. Oh, you've still got your wife and kiddies, remember? You've a lot to be thankful for. Oh, now, look, you must get off. It's half past eight and you've a long way to go yet. In the dark and all. Oh, I do a lot of night driving. Now, you're sure you're going to be all right? I, mean, I just wish I could stay. Well, of course I'm going to be all right. Now, you go on. Give Polly my love and a big kiss for them two little treasures from their nan. <laughs> oh, is this yours? No. Ah, oh, they gave me that at the hospital when I went for the death certificate. Dad's things. Oh, yeah. You be careful now. I'll keep in touch. Yes, do that, love. Now, don't stand out there. You'll catch cold. No, all right. Drive carefully now. Bye. Bye now. Honestly, I tell you, I've yes. just seen him. 
I mean, you won't credit it, would you? You know, leaving your mother on a night like tonight. And that daughter of hers, her memory. She's never even turned up at funeral. But she's in Canada, Vera. Well, there's airplanes, isn't there? And I'll tell you what, I don't know where you notice for Heidi, because we're watching. She was as bright as a button all day when I loved her. Do you know, I kept expecting her to get an anky out, but no, she never did. You might call us duckers, but you won't see us bathing like that. I know I tell you wouldn't leave me if it had been Jack. And I'd have been scraping the eyes out all day. Yes, well, we're not all the same, are we? Come on, she's a nice enough woman, is Hilda. I know. You can make excuses for her, can't you? I mean, she's not all there. I mean, you know what they say? Well, there's no sense. There's no feeling. And the street's back next week at the usual times. And on Sunday, of course, it's the Omnibus. Don't miss that. That's Sunday afternoon, 3 o'clock. And coming up next on Plus, the soaps continue with Emmerdale.